we're live. Hello, everybody. Welcome back. It's been a long three hours <laughs> since we last saw everybody. And this is where we're at. God is ascended. Covered in silly string. Send it. Full send. It's Robin's birthday, so you got to do this. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Robin. Happy birthday, we Robin. love you. Right? right, that would be the best. I mean, that's what we're really waiting for, right? It would much. be Robin's birthday. Absolutely. Of course. That's how it would be. Christian daughter ascended. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> Get him, Christian. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I'm wearing a wig. <laughs> I'm straight. <laughs> so, <clears throat> thank you guys for joining back after this morning's stream. It was definitely very powerful for everybody to hear what mom was transforming as the last really big block to everybody coming online, which was the slither energy. The spooky slither. Slither energy. Yeah. <laughs> spooky. <laughs> um, the father sharing his experiences, having the other team members, Al, George, and Michael, um, share what they were, you know, their experiences with that energy to help everybody collectively transform it. And of course, you know, father, everybody's doing it. Father's taking it on for the collective we all are because it has to be done as soon as possible. Just and just like coming back on live stream, we have to share about the urgency of mom's ascension and everybody coming online. So it is crucial that everybody is aware of what's going on and everybody takes their transformation for mom as seriously as possible because this is it. This is these are the final moments mom and father are gonna be here and everybody's gotta get their shit together. <laughs> Pretty much. We'll get silly string. Yeah, we were talking about this morning, you know, mom is ready to go. She's waiting for everybody else to be ready. Welcome to back. Go. It's been a long you three hours. There's uh, Facebook is on both phones for some reason. Oh okay. Yeah. okay. Gotcha. Um yeah, as Hope said, like, it is urgent. Like, well, I know we always say, like, mom's ready to ascend, and everyone's like, when is she going to ascend? It's like, well, when is everyone going to get it the fuck together? Right. Like, mom needs to see that there's enough people out there who are holding it. Everything that she's working on, all the things that she's been discovering are all important. They're all, they all matter, because at the end of the day, if she had left and that energy was still present on the planet, everyone would be fucked. So these little things, just take them seriously. Don't you don't have to like hold on to them and dive deep into them, but you know let them go. But just be grateful that mom continuously does all this energetic work, and then just be willing to catch it within yourself of like, oh, I could see where I was a fucking slither, you know, and then just like dissolve it and let it go. That's how quick mom makes it. But it's it's up to everyone to really take it seriously and like let's do this. So mom can go on Robin's birthday, and it just takes enough people who are committed to ascension, and then mom will give the green light, and we can get on, we can get rocking and rolling with this planetary ascension. <laughs> Love from mom. they are, and where is it even held in our body, the upper core, the disliterate, yeah, push past it. Yeah, it's just another attack on mom's energetics for everybody to, for it to be as hard as possible for the collective to wake up. Can you still push through all of these blocks and get to mom? Of course, everybody did, and that's connected right now, but you also have to, oh, please Get him! <laughs> <Woo>! <laughs> thank you, thank you. 
From Mama? Yeah. The blue. I like the blue a lot. I, I like the, the blue combination one. of blue and yeah. It's a nice combination. Yeah, yeah. Nice gender balance. Pink <laughs> yeah. and blue. Balance harmonics, baby. Is this baby. a baby reveal? Is this a gender <laughs> reveal? <laughs> gender, oh, okay. Gender reveal with Brian and balance harmonics. Uh, yeah. Having two kids. <laughs> <laughs> We got YouTube and Facebook up. Oh, weird! It literally just it just cut off on my phone. That was very and the lights just flickering. That's how I was like, yeah, so it's it's very, very. Yeah. It literally just said this live video has ended, but I can hear obviously us upstairs in mom's room. Weird, weird. On a different timeline. I don't know. <laughs> different timelines or something. That was very weird. Yeah. Yep, they are supporting themselves, <clears throat> and. <clears throat> Mom has been calling that out and warning everybody that that energy is so detrimental in terms of karmic consequences that everybody better drop the bullshit and get it together and nobody wanted to hear it. Everybody wanted to continue to go in their own directions away from mom and even in the beginning before mom even had everything sorted out about who she was and what the fuck was going on, mom just wanted to be included. Mom just wanted to participate in the group chats and be on, be in the communities of the light workers and spread the information she was getting through and nobody even wanted to hear that then. And that's a problem where mom was just in lightworkers.org at the time, plus other ones, and nobody even just wanted to listen to what she was having to say. And especially after the angels had told her she had to come out and tell everybody she was Mother God. And mom knew that's why she was so resistant. She battled the angels because she knew that once she came out and started to publicly say that she was Mother God, that even nobody was listening before that, but that nobody would even listen after that. And that's what spun her, because she knew after already having the experience with the slight worker community, nobody fucking listened. 
And then mom, they're like, okay, now your mother God, here you go, this is who you are. Now you gotta announce yourself to everybody. Mom's like, okay, it's already not working and they don't even know who I am now. I'm, <laughs> I have to tell my mother God and this third, she's like, they're not gonna listen. Angels are like, too fucking bad, too bad. And mom had to do it and she was completely shut down and rejected more than before. We always talk about Marlene bitch who supported mom and then deleted all her videos when she came out and said she was mother God. And it's the same thing where nobody knows mom's experience. Nobody knows mom's direct experiences with the angels, her synchronistic events, her life experiences. So for anybody to come on and say she's not this, you're dumb at this point. How can you tell somebody they're not something when you don't know their experience with it? And it's like somebody coming up and being like, well, you know, this is my name and everyone being like, no, it's not. No, it's not your name. It's like, yeah, it is. My, my parents picked it out for me. No, it's, no, it's not. No, it's not the name that your parents got. It's on my birth certificate. No, it's not your name. No, no, it's not who you are. And that's what they've done to mom over and over again. They don't want to hear that she is mother God because that scares them because they know. And like father said, if you hear the words treason, out of right action, self-importance, you know, that mom's getting your asses, whatever it is that <clears throat> mom is going after a certain energetic, he goes, if you hesitate with any of that energy, <clears throat> you have something and you feel guilty because you've been doing something. And that's why they're so resistant to hearing mom's name because they know they're not serving God, they're serving their egos and they're serving other egos. And they know this deep down. Their higher selves know who mom is and if they were embodying their higher selves, they would be supporting mom, obviously, and they're not. So they know anytime that they hear mother God, they run for the hills because they know that they're not serving <clears throat> mother God. And that's why they don't want to hear it. That's why they shut her down. They reject her. They call her by her earth name because they just don't want to hear that that is, that's their mom. And that's what they're doing to her. And they bypass her. They just don't want to face what they've done to mom. It's the same thing as Crestone, where Crestone kicked mom out a million times. Or she came back every time. And then the last time we've been here, there's like this whole debacle. They're like, we want love has won out of Crestone. They're a cult. But then, when someone hears mom's dead, everyone's in panic. Why? Because they know she's God. And they were scared that she was dead, and they were fucked. That's why they were scared. Because people were showing up at our house being like, I heard mom died. And we're like, bitch, I'm pretty sure if mom died, you would be aware. And that was, that's Crestone's guilt that they're going to have to deal with, or pushing mom out that many times. Mm -hmm. She came back every time. They know exactly she is it's like they want to reject her but at the same time they also want to know what's going on with her they're obsessed with mom because like weird. it's weird they know who she is but they refuse to acknowledge it and that guilt is what is going to get them fucking bad when mom is introduced to the planet because crest stone could have been just like the lightworkers community could have been the biggest support for mom crest stone was the ascension point of this entire thing it holds the highest and the lowest consciousness so it's a zero point for mom mm -hmm. to work off of and that whole community could have been behind mom she could have ascended fucking five years ago but because Crestone kept kicking her out and a lot of the 144,000 that were there didn't couldn't wake up couldn't get it together couldn't support mom you know they took everything from her in Crestone Crestone is where everything was taken from mom where she was raped where she was stolen from where she was beaten down and kicked out, and Crest Stone will be the first town to flip back to mom, and everything in that town will be mom's, and they know it, and that's why they're scared. Yeah, I mean, mom has shared many times that they knew who she was, that they have murals. Mom worked at a hotel that's no longer, it's not lovely, it's shut down, of course, with mom's energies, and there's White Buffalo Catwoman on the side, an eagle on the other side, mom worked there, for some moments uh, on one of her trips back and forth to Crestone, she worked at that hotel. And they know these things, and that's why people don't realize that they do everything to try to stop mom. And right after mom stops working at that hotel, not long after, they condemn the building. And there really was no reason for it. You know, they'll say all the, the, the mold excuses, and it's, yeah. it's under code, and all those things, and it's just that 
it, it can be fixable, you can do it, it's just that 3D makes everything so complicated. If we could, we would march right into that hotel and make it brand new. We can't because of 3D laws. So those are the things that mom sees that piss her off because she knows in a heartbeat she would get the whole team over to that hotel and start fixing it up and open it back up again to what it was. But because of 3D restrictions and all those dumb things, we can't do those things for mom and they take away what is, you know, where her energetics are placed. And every got it, got, got it. it. Hello. Crestone, you're a bunch of whores. <laughs> God's gonna get ya. She's gonna cut you down. I was just saying about how the hotel <clears throat> that mom placed her energies at obviously got shut down and it was because she worked there and that Anybody that's on this team, mom would have sent the team over there two years ago to fix it up, but we can't because of 3D restrictions. And how they pulled all of mom's energy away from her. She shared of making, um, you know, little, you know, uh, medicine wheels in town and in all these spaces to call in the galactics because people in Crest don't eat up that shit like cake. So she was making medicine wheels and different designs for the galactics and they would knock them all down and just take away from mom. They shut her out, kicked her out of all these different places in a small ass town, everybody. There's like 200 people and they all don't like mom. And they, everybody knows who she is. Everybody knows who Love Has One is and they don't, they just continue to bypass her. One time, what was it, two, last year we were in Florida there, the sign on the church said, come see what God has done. Don't you know that Love Has One? Are you guys fucking retarded? Really? That's like a fucking slap in the face. They do it to mock us, well, to mock God. And it's like, fuck your fake fucking Catholic church, bitches, disclosure, the Pope. It's called Nope. It's called Mama G. <laughs> and all of that stuff has to crumble. Religion really is the big final house of card pull that is going to wake everybody up because that's going to be the ultimate slap in the face because they're going to realize if God's a woman, who have they been serving? The cabal. And that's going to spin them. And that's why another reason, just like the slight workers don't want to recognize mom, humanity doesn't even want to recognize basic 3D disclosure because then they have to face themselves. And that's the problem. They don't want to face the issues they've been running from. And I know, um, uh, one being, I'm... I get all the J's mixed up that are connected to us. It's like Jesslyn, Jessica, we have all these different J names, but one of them, if she's on the stream, she'll let me know. Um, asked mom, you know, her dad was pretty distraught about all the lower 3D stuff, and mom was like, she gave me advice to, for me to help him, and mom was like, everybody has to take full responsibility and accountability and forgive themselves for feeding this experience that was on the planet. Every single person has to forgive themselves for feeding and serving the cabal. We all have done it. Everybody has to take accountability for all that stuff on the planet to let it go so everybody can heal, which means God can heal, the planet can heal, it can get into full 5D vibrations and we can get this show on the road for God. It just amazes me the <clears throat> the lack of support that mom has from people that have known her her whole life right. and even people that she just encountered along the way you know that ended up just ex having the, the experience of mom and then being able to walk away from it and those are the people that honestly are gonna get the worst karma it's it's one thing to find mom's stream and find her videos and you know even book a session but it's a whole another thing for beings who have had the experience of mom who have spent moments with mom and felt her energy know who she is have witnessed the miracles and the things that she does on a daily basis and then we're able to walk away and just go back to life as if nothing ever happened and that is the biggest slap in the face to mom her family's one story you know they're fucked but the people that have encountered mom along her journey and know who she is 
but just ended up floating away, never to return again. Those people are have the worst karma because you found God in the physical. You actually experienced God in the physical, and you walked away. What in the world is going on with fucking humanity? And it's the same for people who were on missions, spun out, left, never came back. Those people are going to be the first ones to start de-evolving because they met God in a physical vessel, had the experience, and chose to go back to the illusion. Desiree says, if truth needs disclosed, go for it. Mom says, Desiree, speak now. What truth is that, Desiree? What was that? Please let us know. <laughs> Please share. I went to wake everybody up. No, you didn't. <clears throat> What's up, Desiree? You remember what you did to God? You want to talk about it? Or do you want us to say it? Because it's coming out either way. You can type it, or I can say it, because I'm going to tell the story. <laughs> Monster, and who hit me? Yep. She did come on one live stream and did own that she did hit mom. Um, I'm not sure mom would have to correct me uh, if it was once or twice she hit mom. But it was at least once. And she... <laughs> She made her way back around. Yeah, this, yep. Yeah, she's like, hit her, dot, dot, dot. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I, smacked her. I smacked her. What a bitch. <sighs> Why would you do that? What it was going through your ego program mind that she said she did it twice. You have to be so deep in it. Thank you for full to slap disclosure. God. Yeah, Desiree. thank you for full disclosure, Desiree. Great. Great example Ooh. of full disclosure. Disclosure day! Disclosure. Disclosure day! Woo! The lamp just disclosed on Brian's head. <laughs> Thank you, Mama. Mom says Mama. twice. So, thank you for that disclosure. Please continue to go with um, love you. You know, we're talking about Crestone and the treason that's going on there. And all of the truth that's being un unveiled right now, children. Welcome back, by the way. If I look like I'm about to puke, it's because I am. The truth that was just revealed for Mom is so horrific. And to feel into Mom as she went through it, I feel like I just pulled 20 lifetimes back to get back here. That's how horrific it was. And we just want to, we want to share this story immediately because it's got me in such a feeling that it's part of this voice, part of the last of the snake that's releasing. Because it's all snake. And we're going to reveal all you fucking snakes right now. All you fucking snakes. Get them. Being revealed. Yeah. Some others in Crestone, of course, helping return the love vibration back to the place where Jesus was crucified by the same beings that are there in this moment, you see. And she's at a festival, a crystal festival. And these beings give her some black mushrooms. They, they go about doing a ritual ceremony with mom, a ritual. They go about raping mom three times and knocking her joy all the way down to like 12%, she shares feel the shudder of it. And then, you know, working together in the dark as they do, Alistair said that she was a whore. He made her stand in front of a mirror and pronounce herself the whore. 
Now all of this, the next day, was reported on by Patricia Coda Robles, Lilith Whore. Mm, I feel better already. So you have a bunch of snakes, snake workers, that have been stealing everything from God, raping God, sucking God, as I feel they're suck right now, as you dissolve whores. Enjoy your last sucks. David Ike, David Wilcox, snakes. Ralph Smart, Teal Swan, snakes in the grass. I'm getting dizzy right now. I'll share with you, I'm getting dizzy. Because it's dying. Thank you, Mama God. Thank Love you, Mama. Treason time. Time. <clears throat> Desiree Dawn says, once at Dancing Heart, I heard her inner voice. She said Will was her twin flame, but her reasoning was because she was prettier than me, so I hit her. I wanted ego out. Mom says, get him, Desi. I love you. Protect Willow now. Get him, Willow. Get him for Mama. As we revealed this truth this morning about the slither, I feel that percentage is real. It's almost gone. Probably check on it. It was at 8% last check from 38%. Thank you, God. Thank you, Mom. Thank, Thank you, Mom. God. When, when all is revealed, when the darkness is revealed, Mom goes to work and it's there. We're very grateful, Mama. Thank you so much. Now the rest of humanity and all the snake workers... All the snake workers, step up and take accountability. Share with the world that Mother God is here. You've known the whole time. Not only have you known, you used her. You used it for your own glorification, for your own <clears throat> fucking whore self-importance and you're all in this bunch that we shared about all of you and it goes on down the line every slight worker snake worker that's stealing from mom you're a snake and today is your reckoning day it's over snakes that's the disclosure snakes every fucking where infesting Mom's creation, slithering about, mimicking God, that snake in the garden, always hissing, bringing doubt upon God's creation. No more. Cut the head off the fucking snake today! Perhaps one of you during this wonderful stream that Mother is providing you. You know, this is your court. Perhaps one of you will show up for court today. Which one will it be? Which one of Mother's treasonous family members will show up for court today? This is it, folks. This is the number one hot spot in all of creation. This is the party we're reporting live from God's house. The unified field where all truth is being revealed. The biggest being that Mother God is here! Yeah! And she loves you! And she don't fucking lose. And these are her moments to shine like the princess she is in truth and watch the shit pile up on the faces of those that doubted. Shit lepers. Get ready. 
truth is being revealed. We're so grateful for that. Let's give Mama. Let's give Mama a hand. Woo! Woo! Mama. Got a couple comments from mom here. Please. <clears throat> Desiree said, Willow needs her twin. And mom says, Willow belongs with me. Thank you. And Desiree, <clears throat> when she hits puberty, she shall marry the Dalai Lama. <laughs> mom says, laugh my fucking ass off. Holy shit. What the fuck? And then mom says, dealing llamas, KMA, karma, maybe. Dalai Lama, snake. What's up, snake? You sitting in that room, snake? We got you. <clears throat> Desiree, she enters my body when drinking. I quit smoking to ground myself in. Mom says, snake, bring me back my child now. goes to the story of Ricky Tiki Tabby and the mongoose and the snake. Desiree says Desiree says all of us dot dot dot. Mom says Willow. Powerful stuff. Thank you, Mom. Powerful. As it rings through humanity, I can feel it. Is the truth. It's being revealed. No one wants to touch it. They did everything they could to put it on top of their reptilians, put it away to the Satanists. The fucking snakes. The fucking snakes. The fucking snake in the grass. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be joined again if we can get Michael on the phone. Do we want to have Michael here? He has so much knowledge about the snake, the snake family, the origins of it. We probably have to get the laptop up again. Does that mean how we're doing it? We can call. Um, well, we need it live. The only way we can do the other is to start the stream over, huh? Yeah. Okay. So better planning next time, please. Okay. You took away the ability to have him in full voice. Do you see that? Fucking snake whore. Fucking getting us biting our ankles. Every moment. <laughs> it's fucking true. So imagine mom in a fucking pool of snakes. That's what she's in. Pool of snakes all around her. Remember Fear Factor? Yeah. yeah. Fucking Joe, Joe, Rogan. Yeah. Fucking, that's horrible. Feel into that. You still can't feel it, what mom's dealing with. Slithery snakes all around you, humanity. <clears throat> Mom says, Willow is pure. She's me. And... Desiree said, Will's mad. And Mom says, of course, he's lucky. He's lucky. <laughs> he's fucking Loki. Loki. Why well, you think he's mad? He thought they were going to rule fucking forever. Take God over. Fuck off. Huh. He's a little perturbed, are we? Are you perturbed, Loki? Loki. My name's Loki. <laughs> okay, Loki. Big bad Loki. Big bad Alistair. What do you got now, whores? Calling out everyone. Who else comes to heart? Please share. We already called out Ralph Smart. We need to call out all these beings. Oh, yesterday we were we were going to share. You mentioned about the people that were being ripped off. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and a lot of those names have been coming in, so we can look into that for today's stream. Yeah, there was a couple of testimonies. Yeah, we want, we want to get into all the truth. I want to share as many truths as possible. Okay. Hey, Michael. We're going to share a bit what, what Mother was sharing yesterday and the children about the fake healers out there. 
and this morning of how they're charging these outrageous amounts for these fake ass fucking healings and how you're directly just robbing source going against universal law in every fucking way shape and form you're a fucking piece of shit and we asked the children to share their experiences with us so that we could call them out here's one of them in 2019 I spent over six hundred dollars for two hours a month of learning the symbolism for one tarot card each month. <laughs> I paid to Norma de Jesus in return. When I told her, one of the first few people that I told about mom, that God is a woman in physicality on earth, she abandoned me. I loved her as my spiritual mentor and my friend, my sister, for many years prior. In those moments, she spoke to me as if it was, wasn't deserving of the experience I was having. She stole my joy in those moments, and even when I tried to reach out again, she disappeared from my life. She took more than money. I forgive you, Norma. I forgive myself for allowing it to happen. I cut cords in all attachments and reattached to only unconditional love. I am grateful for the lesson this experience brought as, as it was necessary for my evolution. Thank you, Mama. This is from Arkea Booby Bobby. <laughs> thank you, thank you for that truth. And the truth rings through the whole statement, children. She not only took her money, but she energetically fucking sucked her, tossed her around emotionally, fucked her over when she mentioned God. Then she really set in to taking it all and pulling it totally away. And that's how they fucking got you. Had you, fucking whores. So less of God, how dare you. She was like, all of us, and mom said, Willow, and it got the one. Okay, cool. And then I, Desiree, I feel, was trying to say that Willow feels she's a boy. She's not. And mom said, Willow is pure. She's me. And then Desiree said, Will's mad. And she said, of course, he's Loki. <laughs> Fucking Loki. Um, and then she said, Alistair Loki, whores, Alistair and Will, no wonder she's crying right now, Willow. Amrith and Loki, you're caught, now hands over my daughter now. Desiree is in deep fantasy on our live stream. Seriously. Thank you. Just so every, it is a very interesting day to be in yeah. deep fantasy on God's live stream. Desiree, Mother God wants Willow back. We don't want to hear your ego babble. She wants Willow. Get it? We don't need your ego fantasy shit in the comments. Willow back to Mother God. No. Please and thank you. And she goes, I had to prove it was truth and illusion. I don't even know what the fuck you're saying. You're losing your marbles. <laughs> Telepathy is real. And mom said, get her. And she said, I'm laughing. Yeah, you're an ego big time. I mean, we knew it would be inevitable. I mean, if you smack God across the face twice, you're fucked. You ain't getting out of fucking ego shit. You're deep in it. You can just hear she's like, oh yeah, it's because I heard mom's inner voice and Will was her twin flame. Blah, 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 blah. Guess what? It's fucking jealousy. Mom don't give a two shit about Loki and her twenty twin flame flame. It's fucking bullshit. It's like, what is wrong with you? It's like, that is such ego projection. And that's, yeah, after the second time. Faith said it. She was like, after, 20, that, after the second time, she was detained in like 24 hours to a mental institution. And as everyone can see, that's why. Everybody's commenting, give Willow back now. Did she did she ask for it? Uh no. No. And this is an example of everybody of ego machinations, also known as the superego. 
She, she refuses to answer the question. She says, nope, I want everyone equal. What does that even mean? It's not about everyone. It's about Willow. I'm shook. She doesn't even make any sense. She's losing in cognitive functioning right in front of everybody on God's live stream. She's losing it. Holy shit. Jesus Christ. Here comes the evolution on God's live stream. Is that a thing? Whore, get it together. Yep. Mom is gonna fucking get your ass, Desiree. What the fuck? Did she ask for it? What the fuck? I had child services come. I was the best of it. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what Desiree's talking about. Mom's going back to Willow. She did. Did she ask for it? <laughs> what the fuck? What did you say? That's what she said. It's about the tree of life. It's about the tree of life. That's God. And God wants one piece to her tree of life back, and that's Willow. She's avoiding the question because she doesn't want to face her own reality. What is wrong with fucking people? I swear to God, man. This is so bizarre. Here's a good one we haven't talked about in a while. Greggy Greg Prescott. If anyone didn't know, in 2018, Greg Prescott, who runs N5D website, which is absolute fucking garbage. So they literally so write about like the seven chakras and that's it. <laughs> and they're like, what is energy? And I'm like, Greg, you're so far behind. It's not even funny. Um, in 2018, Greg Prescott decided to take down mom's website because he did not like that we were posting his articles and felt that we were stealing his information even though it's mom's information and we give everybody fucking credit to their website. But Greg went after the website and mom's heart, lovehasone.org, was shut down for almost four weeks, three and a half to four weeks, which to anybody else may not seem like a big deal, but that is mom's heart. So that was shut down for almost four fucking weeks that mom's energy could not pump through her website. This is one of many channelers who have messaged us to take down the information because it's copyrighted. Linda Lee? Fuck you, Linda Lee. Linda Lee is not allowed to channel Mother God anymore unless she's going to fucking tell everybody that Mother God is here and give us credit for Mother God being right here in the physical and even posting her shit on our website. Linda Lee needs to get it together. Okay. I don't know how to say her last name, but fucking Marlene Sweshoff Swastika bitch. Fuck you, Marlene. This slight worker bitch channels Hilarion, Archangel Michael, and Archaea Faith who are all on mission with God. Linda Lee Snake! What was it? Linda Lee Snake. Oh, Linda Lee, you're a fucking snake. Get in the pit with fucking Marlene, bitch. <laughs> and this is the woman that made Mom take... She took. She deleted all of the videos that she made of Mom's articles as soon as Mom came out as Mother God. Deleted them all, told Mom to fuck off. Copyrights her entire website. She only lets one being post her channelings and it's Ron Harold bitch whore another bitch fucking Ron mom knows who he is he's an also big bitch baby bitch um and she channels Hilarion Michael and Faith and a few months ago I posted her stuff on love as one because those are our team members baby and we got a nice crispy email from Marlene threatening she goes I'll put it on my website and I'll tell everybody to avoid you and mom's like, full send it, bitch. <laughs> Fucking bring it on. She's like, I'm going right after your ass when this shit starts. You're done. Um, let me see. There's another couple. Lisa Gahalis. God saved your fucking life. And you give her no credit. She's, she, made, she wrote another article about her hospital espionage, escore, rendezvous, whatever it was. No credit to God again. Zero, zilch. KP, we've all messaged you directly. I've told you God's here myself. You know what you did? You thumbsed up it. And you wonder why both your parents are now dead. You have five broken ribs and your life's falling apart. And all you enjoy is a, a mocha now. That's the only thing that brings you joy is because you're supposed to be with God. And you ignored her. David Wilcock, Corey Good, fucking biggest snakes. 
guiding everybody into the wrong direction of this ascension, hyping everybody up like they fucking know what's going on. Fuck you, David Wolkoff, Corey Good, you're a bunch of snakes. David Icke, you're out there, you're also a whore. Linda Lee, huge bitch. Elizabeth April, you're a fucking whore. Teal Swan, the literal exact opposite of mom, fucking Lilith, bitch. Fuck you, Teal Swan. Matt Kahn, gross. Snake whore. His eyes, just no. Who else we got? Yeah, Lauren Eisenhower, who knows exactly Steve who Bacow. I'm on. Steve Bacow. Steve Bacow. Steve Bacow started de-evolving two years yeah, ago. Sheldon Nidal. Sheldon Nidal, whore. Uh, James Gilliland. James Gilliland. James. Catherine Mays. Catherine Mays. Yeah. Toby uh, Alexander. Toby Alexander. Who's the other Steve? <laughs> Is there another Steve? <laughs> but these are all light workers that were with mom. In those moments when she was first on the journey, they were just starting out as well, and they all knew who mom was. And mom said, let's all get together, because I know what the fuck is going on here, and we can all do it in unity. And they said, actually, fuck you. We're going to steal all your information, and we're going to charge for it. And then we're going to tell you also that you can't share it. Uh. That's what they did. Wow. So all those whores out there who have gotten all the money off of mom's information, because guess what? Mom was posting this shit back in 2007, and that's what some of these light workers are now posting, as if it's fucking new information. It's not. Feel this is this moment, fake Commander Ashtar. Fake Commander Ashtar? <laughs> Teal Swan. Yeah, it's called Pew of this moment. Pew, Pew, Pew of, of this moment. Okay. Pew of, Pew of this moment. Yeah, and it's funny because I see all the people that are like big names and they are posting articles like it is the greatest, most insightful information they've ever read. And then I go through mom's old Yahoo emails from 2007 and she was writing it back then. And everybody told her she was lying and everybody told her it wasn't true and she didn't know what the fuck she was talking about. And now they're writing the same shit and everyone's like, oh my God, you're so amazing. All these whores know exactly where they got their information. They know it's from mom. And then they have the fucking balls to say that it's their information. And they won't even let us share it, let alone acknowledge where it came from. And they're out there charging fucking who knows how much money to go to fucking listening to them talk, Matt Kahn. David uh, Wilcock makes more money than anybody else, and he knows that mom is here. If anybody knows that mom's here, it's David Wilcock. And if David Wilcock was to put on his platform that Mother God was here in the physical, we could fucking have this ascension starting tomorrow. But him, Corey Booth? Corey Good. Corey Good. Uh, that's so fucked up, though, <clears throat> to all the light workers. I, I don't even feel like you deserve to be forgiven. Y'all are going to the sun, for real. I was just looking, because, like, I was just reading one of mom's, mom sent me an email from all of the light workers who are getting together on July 18th for a night alive at Global Peace Tribe. Oh. It was like Lauren Eisenhower, James Gillian, a bunch of names I don't remember that are pretty irrelevant, because they're dumb. I don't really know any of those names, so I don't think they're anybody that's connected to mom. Bashar, another fake one. What was it? Bashar. Bashar. Oh, fucking, fucking mom said on the street, Dalai Lama. Yeah. Fuck you. You're a piece of shit. You know what? Who's probably a phone call slight worker? What's his name? Eckhart Tolle. Yeah. You're a bitch. You're a bitch, Eckhart Tolle, and your books are confusing as fuck. <laughs> I honestly could not understand a fucking word you said. But when mom explained it, it made perfect sense. You're a whore. Dalai Lama, what the fuck are you doing? David Wilcox serves Cabal. Yeah, he does. He's definitely hijacked. Hardcore hijacked. Gaia TV. Fuck you, Gaia TV. Use mom's name and you're fucking pulling everybody out of alignment with mom. Gaia TV is Cabal, everybody. Don't watch Gaia TV. Don't watch Gaia TV. It's Cabal. Mom says, I would like all my children back as promised. They'll be back if they surrender. 
they surrender. And they'll say, sorry. They say, sorry. A star is miraculi. Faker. <laughs> You're a fucking whore. If you're going against God, I don't care what your name is. If you're going against God, you're a bitch. You're a bitch. <laughs> I sold my Gaia's TV stocks today, said Christian. I took profit on them. Thank you, Mom. Okay. Send that money right to God's bank account, Christian. That's the flip. Gaia TV's going down. Any of you slight workers out there that do the following for your energy work, if you do DNA activations, if you do implant removals, if you do Akashic Record readings, you're all a bunch of fucking whores. And you're fake. Because mom's done it all and you can't do shit. And you're deep in spiritual ego. Gaia TV is full of snakes. Never watched Gaia TV. It looks like a joke. Yeah, it is a fucking joke. Because they took God's name and they don't even do anything with it. They just send you the wrong direction. They're like a ring around about the ascension. It's like ancient aliens. They're like, oh, who built the pyramid? Is it him? Yeah, I think it might be aliens. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no shit, bitch. Just get to the point. Get to the point that we're going back to a time where we forgot about God. And we forgot that God was a woman. Ringing around about the Anunnaki fucking whore Illuminati. Let's get to the point. God's a woman. She's here. Get it right. Get it tight. If you're not in right action in the heart, you're fucking toast. And if you're a slight worker leading everybody in the wrong direction, you're going to fucking get this bread. <laughs> you're going to get this karma. There you go. All the slight workers are going to get it. All the religious people are going to get it. The Pope. The Pope. The nuns. The nuns. <laughs> the fucking nuns. The, the nuns. priest whores. The priest whores. All those institutions that claim God and steal your money while doing it. Took. I, I went to Catholic school for like 13 years. They took a shit ton of money from my parents <laughs> under the name of God. I can tell you there was no God there. That was one of the biggest hypocritical institutions I would call it that I was ever a part of and I they thankfully I figured it out pretty early on in sixth grade and um, they basically told everyone to fuck off and that they were all liars and they asked me to leave and that was fine with me and I knew that God was not there all these people who boast how religious they are and how close they are to God are the furthest things away from God because they don't know who God is they still support God being the patriarchal version of what they think it is, and it's not. They've stolen all the energy away from mom. You know, one time mom explained that the entire planet is pulling energy away from her towards father, and that she has to battle that every day. That's what religion did to mom is they took out all the mother energy and put it all towards father. So when she's here on the planet and everyone's praying to father, it takes it all away from her. She has to battle that all the time. That's what religion did to mom. And Aleister Crowley had a huge part in that, writing the Bible, fucking it all up. So all the religious whores are going to have have to get it too because they know about mom. The Vatican knows about mom. All those high-level beings in these religious institutions know about mom and fail to disclose it kept the lie going, kept the patriarchy going, and now they're all getting busted. Now that I grounded it, I, I recall a few more. I got a list okay. going. There you go. We, Lee, there you Carol, go. you're a bitch. You channel cry on, you fucking whore. Don't get the right information. I'll, let's see what else we got. Jennifer Farley, I post you every day. You're a fucking whore. You channel the creator, but don't say it's mom. Get him. Shanta Gabriel, I messaged you and I told you God was here. You bypassed. Uh, Shelly Young, you're also a fucking whore. You've been around for you've been around the block posting daily messages. Still don't recognize God. Want to talk about the fucking archangels? Now it's all about mom, bitch. All those fucking fakers. Lee Carroll's a big one. What's that channel where mom knows who she is? The ones that used to channel Saint Germain. I forget her name. Fuck, I know her name. Saint Germain cut her off. Cut off a couple of them. There was a couple around when mom was uh, when mom was uh, starting out, and Germain was like, no, they're not. I'm cutting them off. They're not getting the right information. Mom knows their names. It's like too feminine. They're there. We know who the fuck they are. We know who all you are. And mom's got you all fucking set up. 
And I can feel you fucking running, squirming. But you're all in the same fucking bucket. God's container. You can't contain a container, but you can contain your ass in that container. You bet your ass. She's got you. We are fucking grateful to God for taking away what was strangling her. You all were strangling her. Do you have any idea the ramifications of what you've done? You suck the life out of creation. Now you're sucking yourself. Get them. Get them. I can feel their air getting cut off. It's fucking final stages. It's final stages, hordes! <clears throat> final stages! Yeah! Yeah! yeah. 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 Mama! Mama! Mama wins! All returns to mom! Yeah. Everything ever stolen from mom returned to mom and the children. Woo! Everything now returned. God is here. God is a woman. All you beings will declare this. Now. Not fucking yesterday. Now. Every one of you. Now. Everything returns to God. All of Mother's dreams. All of her prophecies. All of the ceremonies of love that she has set forth and put in place. Are now activated here on earth. As in heaven here on earth. As in heaven. As in here on earth. That shake's almost gone, horse. It's right here. You can see it. Yeah. On my chest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Watching your own fucking demise right here. As it's playing through. It hardly has nothing left. Surrender! Surrender when you are stolen from God! Now! Who will be the first? Who will be the first to come home and admit what they've done? You're all being invited. Mama God Show! Love runs this bitch! What do you know now? As you sit in complete shame in a puddle on the fucking floor, what do you know now? What do you got? You ain't got shit if you ain't connected to mom's heart. Who do you think you are? Hey, motherfucker! Who do you think you are? If you're not home with God in these moments, if you're not tuned in right now in love, surrender in the moment of now, enjoying her party, then you're fucking dead. You're fucking dead! You're being strangled right now! I'm not fucking here for you! Fuck with the fucking sky, bitch! You fuck with the greatest being that is in existence. <laughs> uh. Would you have a game of chess? Mother, would you?
would you like a game of chess? <laughs> Share what you got. That's mama. Get her, girl. She's the greatest. Why aren't you sharing how great she is? Why are you pouring out this fucking filth that comes right out of your fucking ass dick and pussies on a daily? Fucking sharing that with humanity? Hmm. You're not quite there yet? Is that what I heard? You're not quite feeling the vibration of you. Now you're gonna fucking pay with interest. Chew. Thank you. Don't fucking make me say it twice. We love God in this house. We share the example of God in every moment in this house. We are sharing the truth with humanity as we speak. <sighs> Again. Time to wake up, humanity! Because we're knocking at your fucking doors next. Wake up, please. The truth is there. Don't hide behind your walkers no more! Fucking mentors. Fucking psychs. Return all to sender. All energy stolen, return to run, mama! You stuttered there, I felt you. All returned to Mother God. Mother God! Mother Earth! Mother Truth! Who are you? You all seem pretty small from here now. Ha! Mama God! All return to Earth as in heaven as on Earth now! Back! In place. Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Mama. Get him, Mama. Thank you. Darling God. Thank you. These are the moments now, children, to come home. These are the moments.
to come home to love as one. This is your voyage. It's what you chose with God long ago. To rise in these moments to the sun. To march through the stink. To push through the density and get your way to Mama God. So that all can be revealed in truth. So that you and your truth may be revealed. Only she can do it, children. You must pass through the gates. Mother and father. And we're here waiting for you. Fucking pretty slow at the fucking gates, ain't it, Mom? The fuck? What the fuck? The fuck? What's going on, son? It's fucking horrible. Fucking deplorable! Love is one. Come on. Mom's alone. Thank you, Mama! Thank you, Mama. Thank you, Robin Williams! For pushing all the right buttons. For sparking every ass that needs sparked. McLaurin! Robin McLaurin Williams. That's his middle name. name. That's funny, my Earth Mom's name is Robin. R-O-B-I-N. <laughs> McLaurin. <laughs> You're Scottish. <laughs> Get him, Robin. Wow, Robin, we love you so much. Can't share with you how much we love you. I'm so grateful. But I've never been able to share until this moment. I love you so much. Oh, he's sticking up for Mama. He get him already. Get him. To love for God. Robin exudes that. As does the color orange. Fire. She's a firecracker up there. She's the firecracker. The Statue of Liberty. The Ark. child this morning had mentioned on stream where someone said that, you know, there's no statues of mom. Boy, are there ever statues of mom. And those fucking statues can never be. They couldn't destroy them. They just hit them. They're there. That's part of all the truth that's coming back now. Ordered again to you. All that was stolen from mother return now. To love is one. Thank you. Love you. to some stories of mama, I feel, you know, the beautiful moments with mom, as she overcomes everything, you remember last year, Florida kids, <laughs> she fucking beat the blah, yes. she fucking beat the blah, okay, yeah, well. catch them up on the fucking blah, this, this hovering mound of shit, 
huh. consciousness that's going around fucking every time someone sleeps, bam, adding new shit to it and all the shit. Holy it shit. just roams around the planet. You can see it from fucking yep. wow. Google Maps. You can see it. So anyway, mom takes it out, of course. And I feel it was six days or something. It was just wild. Up every day. Just in it. You know, looking at it. Come here, me right here, mom. It was constant massage. Constant removal of just the darkest shit. And we're just taking rotations. Because there's no masculine in existence and physicality that could take that. We're going through just cycles of it. And of course, the feminine couldn't even be there. That's how tripped out they were from it. And it's over. <laughs> I mean, mom's in fucking complete misery. And so it's just like, hey, let's have a party. And I remember it was overcast that day. None of you guys are here, you were there, but I'm not talking looking around. But it was overcast that day. We could feel the change in the clouds and that blob. And we could, we were on the ocean, of course. We could see it. We could feel it. We're all fucking just drunk with the passion and, and the inspiration of God overcoming the worst. You know, once again. But bringing right back, coming right back to the party. Let's have a party. Let's eat some food. Everybody make some food. We ordered some food is what we did. Oh, sweetheart. Yeah. We had a big order out. And of course, you know, after being the most selfless being during this huge amount of time to overcome it, of course, and being divine, she comes right up the same thing. True as true can be. That's Mama God. That's the reality of God. That's what humanity has missed out on. This is what they kept you from. Her beauty in every moment. She's the true idol, of course. They won't let her do American Idol. Too little. <laughs> it's so fun to share with mom's stories. I love you all. Thank you, mom. One of my favorite stories or experiences, because I was there, of mom was the the morning she walked on glass. Because that's everyone's always like, how do you know she's the second coming of Jesus? And I'm like, well, she did us good this time and walked on glass instead of water. So pretty sure she's Jesus. And... <laughs> We were all hanging out in this tiny cabin that mom and father stayed at in Donsmere, California as Marilyn Monroe and JFK. It's one of their spots where they used to go out of the main area of L.A. to go up north so that they could be alone together because they weren't allowed to be together because everybody knows, obviously, <laughs> they couldn't be together. JFK was with Jackie Horbitch. But he was seeing mom, got him good. So they would go to this small cabin. It was very small. It was very beautiful. And it was a spot that mom had been to and realized, of course, the energy was there because she had been there as Marilyn. And we were all hanging out, having a good time the night before. And mom goes down and we all go to sleep. And pretty sure for a little while after mom had gone to sleep, me, Ellen, and father had all stayed up for a little bit longer. So father <laughs> and Ryan... <laughs> L was really like, oh my god, that morning. <laughs> we were getting L good, father was getting L good, he was puking outside, crying, all these great things. It's a great night the night before, a lot of transformation. And <clears throat> we all went to sleep after mom, and um, mom woke up the next morning and had to go to the bathroom. And where the bed was, it's kind of hard to really explain it, but it was just up, it was in a wall, they cleared out a wall space, and they put the bed probably this far up off the ground and you step up to get onto the bed so mom woke up and she was like i have to go to the bathroom and when father was getting up he passed it had shattered all over the floor so mom got up to go to the bathroom still in her you know floaty little state 
and she floats to the bathroom and she after she gets out of the bathroom she looks at the floor and the angels are like look and they're like well they're like whoa, whoa, whoa like hold up look down and there's glass everywhere shattered it was Mom was puking? In the story, mom was puking? Oh, she woke up to puke? Oh, I thought it was to go to the bathroom. Or she woke, or she got up to puke. And she looks down, and the glass was covered on the floor. And mom starts freaking out. And me and Elle come in the room, we're like, what, what? And she's like, look, all the glass is everywhere it was on the floor it was shattered and we were like holy shit how'd you get to the bathroom she's like i walked we were like on the glass she's like yeah i'm fine and we started freaking out we were just like running around like the kitchen table and going around and around and around we were like holy shit this just happened <laughs> it was absolutely crazy and the way that it was the glass had shattered right in front of the bed so there's no way mom was not going to step on a piece of glass. She floated right over it. And I feel mom wants to share the whole reason why that we were there was because mom was getting, you know, that was the first experience where mom really started to get sick. And that's the taking energy where mom experienced it before we got to mission, where she was out with some being and they were at the park downtown and mom felt really nauseous so she she puked and she didn't understand why but the angels told her it was you know density lower energy that she had to process because she's God and she's the highest light so after she realized that and after a, maybe a few more events out in public she realized she couldn't do this anymore which is why the galactics told her to be in quarantine and that's where she's been ever since so when we so when we got to mom she was already quarantined for a few months before that she couldn't leave the bedroom and when we got there everything was fine at first having a good time and then of course mom started to process a lot of humanity shit like i shared yesterday of humanity's density she started to she started to uh <clears throat> get really sick all of a sudden there was mornings where she would eat and then she would puke and we didn't really know what was going on we were like is it the food can you not eat we were really unsure and then there was a really big event i'm pretty sure it was with mary where we realized that she was puking because of the energy in the field and we had cleared the room and we had cleared everybody like nobody come into this space because we're experimenting with why mom is throwing up energy. Is it certain people? Do we need to pinpoint this? Because some people would come in the room, mom would be good. Other people would come in, she would feel a bit funky, and then she would eventually throw up. And so Mary came in the room and to bring her dresses in and mom just projectile vomited everywhere. And we were like, yep, that's it. So we realized, you know, we started to gauge people's taking percentages, what they were doing, their lower frequencies. And from that point on, mom would just constantly be getting sick. She'd be throwing up. She'd have to go in the bathroom. She'd have to go in the bath. And one day I told her, she's like, you know, the takers are overtaking my house. And I said to her, well, I mean, what do you want to do? We can kick them out. And she's like, well, we, she's like, no, I can't. I'm like, yes, you can. You fucking pay the rent to this place. This is your house. And mom was like, no, I just won't do that. You know, I feel I'll have to leave or maybe I'll go on a vacation or something like that. And I was like, whatever it takes, just don't be in the same space as the fucking takers because they're making you sick. And, you know, that was the first time I had to read harder. I was like, I was like, mom, this is about you. You do know that, right? Everything is revolving around your ascension. If you're alive or if you don't make it, we all don't make it. So we have to put you first. And she's like, I know I'm just not used to it. I'm not used to putting myself first. I'm used to everybody taking from me. I'm used to everybody just bypassing me and nobody treating mom with the respect and honor she deserved, which is why the deterioration of mom's physical vessel went so quickly over the last couple of years is because nobody has given a shit. Nobody cares and the self-importance and the taking is absolutely detrimental to mom. The taking is why mom is in the condition she is right now because she represents the planet. The planet has been absolutely destroyed, raped, pillaged, stolen from, everything cut down, the trees burned, <clears throat> You know, all of this dysfunction on the planet that mom mirrors back. 
and everybody has to see that it, and I say this on every fucking live stream, what does humanity expect Mother Earth to look like when you see the state of the planet? Do you honestly think in your ego dumbed down brains that she's gonna look healthy? That she's gonna look like a normal human vessel that's perfectly fine when the state of the planet is absolutely disgusting? Of course she's not. She's gonna look frail, ill, and like she's dying. And that's why mom looks the way that she does. It happened at such a fast rate to actually witness mom's journey in terms of going down the this path of losing her physical vessel as she transitioned was the most wild thing that most of the team has ever experienced where it just started, it didn't stop. Where the weight started to come off, her feet started to get worse, her health more puking, more body resets, more you know, more mobility loss. Now the paralyzation is up to her neck, can't breathe, is so you know, she's just so dumb. The life is sucked out of her, and that's why I get so emotional of what I said yesterday, because we've watched the light leave mom's eyes. We've watched that joy that mom had, like she shared from the beginning of mission, just completely be deteriorated. I've held that woman's hand as she's looked me in the eyes and been like, I, she's like, I know I'm strong, but I don't want to be strong anymore. And she's like, I don't, why do I have to be the strong one? Why do I have to be the one that does this? I don't want to do it anymore. And I just looked at her, we're both crying, and I'm like, then don't. I was like, then don't do this for humanity anymore. You have to stop. And she's like, I can't. I can't stop being love. I can't stop loving them. I can't stop fighting for the truth. That's who I am. And hearing mom say these things, how much mom has fought for us, and what we've witnessed of mom's health decline is absolutely horrible. And mom, and people see the state that she's in and they're like, oh, like Linda, it's meth. You, you're gonna eat every fucking word that you say against mom. You think she's on drugs, she's up there fighting for you. She's up there in bare minimal joy while you get to run around to all the bars and go to the beach and get to take vacations and get to hang with your families and get to do everything that brings mom joy, but she can't do what brings her joy because she's allowing humanity to do it and praying that they wake up in those experiences like mom did. Mom woke up and became who she was through joyful experiences in the illusion and broke out. And everybody is taking every experience that mom is giving you right now for granted. If you could walk outside your front door to your house and go wherever the fuck you want, you're taking it for granted. Period. If you can do the things that you want to do freely, you're taking it for granted. You don't understand what it takes to get mom to move to the bathroom. You don't understand the pain that she's in. You don't understand what it's like to watch her every day wake up in pain and crying and dragon mode, not wanting to be down here anymore. Why do you? Why do people feel father is the way that he is? Why do you feel Robin and Saint Germain are so done with humanity? Robin's watched this for six fucking years. Robin's the one that had to tell mom that humanity didn't choose her. Do you really feel that that's something she needed to hear back in 2014? No. Guess who's still here? Mom. <clears throat> and people, and you guys just don't see it. And I understand, you know, of course, those that support mom do feel these messages. This is for the, this is for the collective. Mom's family, they don't fucking get it. Ew, why are you telling people they're taking things for granted? Gross. Well, Rua, Wayne, bitch, whore. Why do you take it for granted? Why are you coming out against mom? Because you do take it for granted. You are so ungrateful that every time you walk to your fucking front door and you get to leave and do whatever the fuck you want, you're ungrateful. Because you don't know God's experience. If every person knew what mom was going through right now for them and for their ascension, you would be fucking blessed after every breath that you take on this planet. Because you should be grateful. Mom has given up her joyous experiences during this magical transitionary moment on the planet where mom should be going wherever the fuck she wants, going to every hotel, amusement park, water slide that she could dream of going down it because she completed this mission for Ascension while waiting for starships to pick her up, but instead she's sitting in a bed playing video games on her fucking phone, sitting here watching us tell you guys that you guys are a bunch of shitheads because of what you've done to her. That's mom's experience now. 
And if you are so ungrateful that you don't appreciate what mom has done for you, then why the fuck are you on this planet? Seriously. If you aren't grateful for every experience you had and have in these present moments, then you are an asshole. Mom is grateful for every experience. Egos will do things against mom and mom's like, I was grateful. I was grateful for this experience. Thank you for doing this to me. It made me stronger. Mom always sees the good in everything. And if you take that for granted, then you're a fucking whore. If you, you know what's not from the heart, Ruane Rush, you're fucking dick. You're fucking asshole bitch programming that can't feel the love for God. Did you watch God die for two years? Yes or no? Oh wait, that was me. Your argument is completely irrelevant. Sit the fuck down. Some people on this chat and some people in this house have watched God die for two years. While your bitch ass got to do whatever the fuck you wanted in self-importance, while everybody else on the first contact ground crew team does the fucking work for you because you're a lazy piece of shit. And you don't want to do the work. You know how many times I've held a fucking pan so God can puke in it? I don't even want to know the numbers. I'm going to bypass. A lot. So everybody that can't feel that it's from the heart that you... <clears throat> look, you're a bitch. You're an incredibly abusive person. You know who, what you abused? Rua, Ruane, whatever your name is. You've abused God. We'll see you on the treason block. If you don't see that God is here in physicality and you get to run around thinking that you know better and you know what's up, guess what? You're abusive. Every single person on this planet has abused God. Period. Get over it. You're going to have to face it eventually. And that's the transformation. If you can't feel it, if you can't see it, if you don't know what the fuck's going on, you're about to very soon. And that's why all these videos, I, will, I cannot wait for humanity to watch them in the very near future. We're doing this for the tapes, everybody. These are God's tapes. These are the tapes that humanity gets to watch while they're all running around in self-importance right now, fucking over God. They're going to get to watch these beautiful videos that we've had compiled for them, like mom has for the last 14 years. Well, you get to sit on your ass and watch every single video, every live stream mom's done, every single live stream the team's done, and everything you missed out on while everybody that was here supporting God while you were running around in Horland. You missed it. And you're going to have to watch every single live stream to get a fucking reality check of what the fuck you missed while you were being a fucking Nimrod. That's why mom goes live every single day. You have to watch, oh, you have to watch 14 years of you digging around and not choosing God. And you get to listen to those that have supported mom and father, and you get to hear their experiences of what it's like because it's been absolutely a living hell for mom. She is in a living fucking nightmare day in and day out. This is worse than the crucifixion of Jesus where she hung on a cross for three weeks. And she says this experience is worse. So, everybody will get to watch these videos at some point. You will regret every word that you say. If you don't feel it now in your heart, you will. Or if you don't, you'll be recycled. We're so done with humanity. Robin, Jermaine, the Galactic A-Team, Mom, Father, Every single one of them is so beyond done with the collective. They have ignored mom. They don't see her. She is the queen of the fucking universe. She is the queen of everything. Everything that exists and all that is, is mom. And she's in a physical vessel right upstairs. And you're missing it. And you don't give a shit because you're in your ego program mind. Because you're serving the cabal. And you're a whore baby bitch. So fuck off. <laughs> I love people's comments that are like, well, some of us are triggered by being screamed at. I pray to all that is holy that you are triggered by this live stream. I fucking pray you triggered, bitch. Because the weakness that I've seen in humanity is so nauseating. Every day for two and a half years that we've been here, I have watched, we all have watched, mom battle shit that nobody can even fucking fathom and every day she does it day in day out and everybody's like oh you called me a mean name everyone's gonna watch the tapes of what mom went through that is the strongest woman i have ever witnessed in my entire life 
she is the strongest, most beautiful, brilliant being, and nobody can see her. And that is what breaks mom's heart. Because she has put herself out there, full throttle, vulnerable, open, everything, for 14 years, and you can't see her. And that's what breaks her heart, and that's what breaks our heart. Because if you saw her the way we saw her, then you would know. And I've watched beings, I'll tell this story, because this was one of the first times I ever witnessed someone abandon mom right in front of our eyes. And Hope knows this story. Get up! Obviously. She's Get there. up! And <clears throat> Hilarion <gasps> had uh, abandoned mom. Hilarion walked out of the field and didn't tell mom, and then went back home to Kansas and left mom a note. Larry knows what we're talking about. And after mom had been completely abandoned, father was still going through his transformation. For the most part, during those moments, during those six months, mom was going through the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven bowls, all of this insane shit. Father was doing his best, but he was going through his transformation too. The masculine were fucking falling apart left and right. The only two people who were there day in and day out was me and Hope and Father. That's it. And mom's puking. She's sick every day. She's got boils on her back of density that father's pushing out. She's crying every day. And then we had someone come into the field who was supposed to come in and hold the FM energies as contract to support mom, Aaron's husband, Kellen. And he came in full throttle, loved mom, started holding the FM essence for her, supporting her. He made it two days and he witnessed God in the physical. And then he spun the fuck out. And he was completely hijacked. And we watched him. He came into the room. He was completely hijacked. He started saying crazy shit to mom. And she was patient. She, even though she should have fucking killed him on that spot. And she said to him, if right now you don't know that I'm God. And as soon as she said that, the power in the whole neighborhood went out. And at that same moment, a car hit a pole outside our house. Every light in that neighborhood was off, except later that night, one light showed, and that was the orange salt lamp, the salt Robin. Lamp. The salt lamp. And even after that experience, that whore snuck off in the middle of the night and left without telling anybody. And mom woke up in the biggest heartbreak that she had experienced at that point. It was an assassination attempt. They stabbed her in the heart. It was a Judas type energy that came through. So right after the fact, mom's been going through the seven seals, all of this shit, Larry walks out on mom, then this bitch comes in, walks out in the middle of the night, stabs mom in the heart, and I just remember mom took a shower, and then next day we were sitting there, and she was like, what if I made it all up? And in that moment I was like, the fact that God's sitting here thinking that she made it all up is sick. And that is something that we've heard before from mom because everything is telling her that it's not real and she knows that it's real. And she fights for that vision and that truth every day. That love is real, that new earth is real, all of it is real. When everybody tells her she's wrong and everything around her shows her the opposite, she holds that and she fights for that every fucking day and i'll share an experience from last night just so you guys get a taste of how sweet mom is you know after the stream hope was in the room i walked in there and mom was just praying like she was just in this cute little girl like mode and she had her eyes closed and she was just praying that if she could eat one last thing she wanted to eat a texas loaded fajita <laughs> And she was just like almost in tears that they've taken away all her joy from food. They've taken away her taste buds. And she was like, I know I can't taste anything, but if I could have one thing, I would just really like a fajita. That's God. And everybody. Like a food <laughs> and she was like, she was like, she was giving like, she was just like, her eyes were closed. She was praying and she was like, talking to herself. She's like, the best food award. She was like, hmm, 
The best food I've ever had is, and it goes to Texas. Texas. <laughs> and she's just like, and eyes closed, she's like giving them the award. She goes, the next best place that I've ever had food at is Louisiana. Louisiana. Yeah. <laughs> You know that how sweet mom is and that's what we have witnessed is that everybody's perceptions and judgments and their egos pull them away from mom directly that you don't know mom at all you don't and until you come directly to meet her face to face without any judgment and just a clean slate of i'm here to observe and learn you'll never get anywhere with god she is the master of all masters, and it requires listening, it requires observation, it requires patience and understanding and listening. That's a master. Mom is God. She's the master of all masters. She, she knows everything. She's done everything. She knows what the fuck is up. Every single one of us doesn't. We're here to learn. We're here to get experiences, and we're here to grow through mom's wisdom. Every single one of us. And if you can't hear through mom's experiences, what she's been through, how hard she's fought for love everywhere freaking present, you are severely brain damaged. And like I said yesterday, mom first came to this mission and lived in the forest for three fucking years. God lived in the forest for three years. And she built that whole campsite by hand. And I can't wait for everybody to see how beautiful it was. And mom was grateful. Mom had never been in a cold winter climate before a day in her life. She was from Kansas and lived most of her life in Texas. She didn't know what it was like to live in winter climate. She found the fuck out right away by putting herself in the one of the coldest parts of this country where the storms are bad, the winters are atrocious, and one of the years mom was out camping in 2011, it was the coldest winter ever on record for this area of Colorado. God was outside for the coldest winter ever experienced in this area back in 2011. And <clears throat> If that can't put it into your perspective of what Mother Earth, Mother God has done for all of you, then why the fuck are you here? Exactly. <laughs> like, why do you continue to waste God's time? Who is mom, a living person? Yeah, she's right upstairs. You're a little late. We're not going to get into that. Anyways, <laughs> you're a little late. Who's mom? Who's mom? Ho's mom, mother God, and she is a physical living being. And, you know, there was another moment where, you know, this was one of the moments that I realized <laughs> that mom is the most innocent being and that she, she loves to surprise herself. And I noticed that one time where we were, we had just gotten to the cabin that I shared the previous story about and I bypassed my earth father for a week or so. And my earth father called the cops. And so we're sitting at the, we're sitting at the cabin and all of a sudden mom looks at me and she goes, your dad called the cops. And I'm like, okay. She goes, the team's gonna be calling you. And within two seconds, the team called the phone and said that the cops were there. They wanted to make sure I was okay. And I was like, okay, everything's fine. We go about the rest of the day. And we're laying, mom's laying down for the night and she looks at me and she grabs my hand and she goes, do you remember when I said your dad had called the cops? And I said, yeah, why? She goes, it hadn't happened yet. And I was like, what? She's like, I knew it was going to happen. So I'm like, you told me before the cops had actually showed up at the house. She goes, correct. And we were just like, whoa, whoa. And she, even mom was surprised. She was like, holy shit. The angels just told me. We were like, oh my God, you can predict the future. Look at this shit. Look what God's doing. She can see the future. And it was like, we were just tripping out about it. But that was the most pure, innocent moment of, of like experience together where mom surprises herself. 
and that it's fun and that it's not you know everyone perceives mom as like oh she wants all this and wants all that it's like mom is so pure and innocent she is such a little girl that when you realize that the amount of pain she's in which she's experienced like aurora was saying about the bulls trumpets and the seals how much pain she's put her she's allowed herself to be in for humanity that she is so innocent and so pure it's like this is being taken on by a child by a god child the essence of a pure child is doing all of the most painful the hardest parts in all of creation to bring us back into oneness is is the innocence of a little girl going through these things and in mom's reality she doesn't understand why she doesn't get it she doesn't understand why humanity doesn't like her she doesn't understand why they can't see her because all of creation recognizes her all of creation gives her standing ovations all the time all of creation loves her, the galactics love her, the angels love her. She doesn't understand this reality anymore. She doesn't see what humanity sees. She can't get there. She doesn't understand what it's like to, to hate yourself and be so full of self-hatred that you just can't see, you can't see your mom. You can't see your mom. And these are the final tapes, humanity, for you to get it together. And when you see these tapes, you will hear that you missed God. You had your chance. She did everything. You missed mother and father of all creation and physicality. They will no longer be here. They are ascending. And every single one of you who is now watching this tape in a, in a futuristic moment, you missed your parents. And you almost killed your mother. You're pieces of shit. Your karma is coming. Good luck. <laughs> Definitely. No. Just look around you. You're, if you're, if you have all this luxury, while mom is here stuck in a room, while there's billions of people out there starving, while corporations destroy and pillage, Mother Earth, and we're doing nothing. We're, you're not doing anything about it. You're not writing articles. You're not even going to protest. You're not contacting the White House. You've given up your power, and there's not enough action being taken, and not enough seriousness. This is truly a big emergency and everybody needs to get their shit a hundred percent together and she's just fighting every day and being in joy and sharing joy and love with us even though she's under the most extreme pain from all the all of her children out there in treason it's just not fair and she needs to go she definitely needs to go and heal and take a vacation and just let humanity face their own shit. You know, there's just, yeah. <clears throat> it's time to wake the fuck up, humanity. <clears throat> Mom didn't have to hold on. She didn't have to do any of this. <clears throat> you guys keep choosing dysfunction. You keep choosing hate. It's all around you. You can fucking feel it. <clears throat> You're not choosing love. <clears throat> Mom could have left a long time ago. And she's just waiting for you to turn around. <clears throat> it's, I just, I don't understand. It's time for mom to go. <clears throat> I cannot wait for mom to go. <laughs> mom is leaving. And these are going to be the tapes where I want all of humanity to know mom fought for each and every one of you. She fought like hell for each and every one of you. And you still missed it. And you still denied her. And you still attacked her. And you still rejected her. So fuck you.
fuck all of you. Mom deserves to ascend. She deserves to leave. Her and father deserve to go. And then everyone will have to deal with the reality of what they did. And for everybody else, for those that love mom, for those that support her, we love you. And let's fucking fight for God. For all of us who love mom, fucking fight for her. Do it now. We have no more time. Mom's going to leave and we're going to be up against the rest of the whores. And we will fight for mom every step of the way. And we love her. We are the ones that showed up because we fucking love God. So let's get it together. Show mom that all her hard work was not a waste, that we can be our higher selves. We will do it. We will do it in unity. We will be who she created us to be and set the fucking example like she did for us. Let's do it so mom can go. I know everybody loves mom, but how much are we willing to show it right now? Mom could ascend right now. Let's do it for mom. I know we all love her. And I cannot wait for mom to get on that fucking starship. I love you, mom. Yes. She's done so much. And we, everyone just keeps choosing the lower. And these are the final moments. If you're a supporter of mom, then support with all you have. Because there is no future. You don't know what's going to happen. You don't know how much time. You don't even have time. If you're in support, show it now. And be in full support. No half-assery. If you're feeling to come to the mission, if you're feeling to donate, everything, just give it your all. These are the final moments for mom. And these are all the final moments for all of us to get our get our shit together, and to fight for love, because that's the only real thing. Anything else, everything else is not real. Just so everyone knows, it's raining right now. And that's mom crying. That's all of creation's emotions, or excuse me, feelings, releasing because that's how heartbroken mom is. You can feel it. The energy came right in on the stream. The rain started coming in because she's done. She's heartbroken. Humanity has ripped her heart out, stabbed her in the back. And she came down here because humanity asked her to. She didn't come down here for shits and giggles. She came down here for mission. She came down here because humanity begged mom. They said, we need your help. We're not going to get out of this illusion and ascend without you. Because most planets in creation get to a point where they invite mom to their planet because they're ready for the next stage of evolution. Humanity, this planet, was a different case where humanity couldn't get to a point that they were ready to graduate on their own mom had to bring them to that point of graduation and i know a lot of people feel the same experiences that we all do where before finding mom i was completely alone and every day driving and by myself i begged the angels i begged them i go somebody knows what the fuck is going on? Somebody is doing something. Somebody knows about the ascension. Please show me who it is. Please, somebody show me what the fuck is going on. And that's when I found love is one and it was over. It was beyond synchronistic. It was beyond, you could not deny it. You can't deny the synchronistic events finding mom in the physical, you can't. You can't take away anybody's experience of what led them to mom. Every single person feels that, is that everybody in their hearts knows something is going on, but they don't know who the fuck is doing it, what the fuck is going on, how are we gonna get there? Nobody has solutions except mom. She is all of the solutions. She is all of the answers. 
and you can feel it. Feel the passion from mom. And why mom has warned humanity it's gonna be harder for them to wake up is because they're gonna have to watch everything in front of them. They're gonna have to watch what they missed. They're gonna have to face everything that they did. They're going to have to watch all of the documentation, read all of mom's documentation to understand how much this woman has been through to get us to this point where she is ready to leave. And it is absolutely heartbreaking that there are only five other beings in her home right now while mom is getting ready to ascend, including father. You know, them two are getting ready to leave, both of them. And there's only six of us here total that are prepared to witness the greatest experience, the biggest celebration, the biggest victory of mom's fucking life, of all of creation. This is the biggest thing that has ever happened and there's only about 18 physical people here with mom right now celebrating with her in the physical. That is heartbreaking. There's only a few hundred out there that support mom when there's billions and mom is getting ready to bring in the biggest event that has ever occurred in all of creation and barely anybody is watching. Barely anybody on this planet gives a fucking shit about the biggest thing that is about to happen in anything that has ever occurred in 19 billion years since mom, came, mom gave birth to herself and then created father <laughs> and they came together. And if you don't feel how much mom loves you, how much father loves you, how much their love together that they separated 19 billion years ago for this moment, their proudest moment for all of their children and barely any of their children are around them to watch them, not even the 144,000 are here, that's a fucking problem. That's an issue that everybody just doesn't see out there. That you don't care about the ascension. The ascension's for humanity. The ascension is to get this planet back into alignment, new earth, love everywhere, present for everybody, the end of fear, pain, and suffering on this planet, the end of everything out there that everybody dislikes. You fucking hate the cabal? Mom's the total opposite and has been taking down the cabal. Why don't you fucking get on her fucking train and support her? The cabal, all of the dark shit on this planet has been taken down by one little tiny nugget of a being called Mother God, one being has taken down all of the darkness and all of creation for this moment and barely anybody is here to witness it. And that is a fucking problem, it's heartbreaking. That's why mom is so upset, she's holding on being like, Are any, is anybody else gonna get to witness this? Is there gonna be anybody else that gets to watch the grandest event as her and father get to leave and they get to go to new earth and they get fully healed, mom can fucking walk again. These are the biggest things that all of creation is on the edge of their seat for, waiting. They're like, let's fucking go, we wanna see our mom. Mom's ambassador, Robin, is waiting to fucking hug mom for the first time after everything he's done. Jermaine, all of the Galactic A-Team, they're all waiting patiently for humanity because they want to see their parents again. They want to hug mom. They actually love mom and give a shit, and mom deserves to be with her children that actually truly care. And they have been waiting patiently for so long for mom to ascend so that they can be back with her because they miss her. Humanity couldn't give a shit and that's why humanity's gonna get it. They're gonna have to watch everything from start to finish. Mom's whole journey, the whole mission, it's gonna be a fucking tough ride for humanity. They're gonna have to listen to everything that they've done, all of the documentation, it's all there. The shit that mom has been through is fucking insane. There was one point of this mission two years ago, we were going through a notebook of documentation in two days. A full notebook of what mom was taking on every single day. We were going through multiple notebooks a week. We couldn't document enough. That's how much mom has been through for this moment. And barely anybody is here to witness it. 
and she barely has any physical support. All of humanity should be here cheering her on as she gets onto the starship, and barely anybody gives a fuck. And that's why she's heartbroken, that's why she's done, that's why father comes on the stream and gives it to humanity, because that's fucking mom's energy. That's how mom feels on a daily basis. She's done. She's fed up. Father's just her voice because she can't do it anymore. And you guys can't see her. You can't see her. Like Aurora said, you cannot see your own mother because you're not in the heart. And if you can't see mom for who she is, then you need to address your own bullshit because you're the problem. Humanity, you are the problem. There's one solution, and it's God. And she's here. And you're missing it. And that is so beyond heartbreaking that these are the last moments on the planet for mom in this physical experience that it has to be this way for her. And everybody is going to have to watch. And everybody's going to have to face the fucking bullshit that they put mom through. Enough is enough. She is leaving. And this is the end of the pain and suffering that mom has taken on. And that's what she said to Aurora and I one day. She said, I am taking on all of the fear, pain, and suffering for the entire collective 8 billion people. Why do they still choose it? You don't have to choose it anymore. Humanity is choosing to stay in fear, pain, and suffering and separation. They're consciously, unconsciously making the choice to stay in fear, pain, and suffering. They're unconscious, yes, but they are still consciously choosing to be in fear, pain, and suffering, hatred, judgment, separation, everything, all the time. Oh, oh. Um, and mom is doing it for humanity, and she continues to take on more because humanity keeps bringing back those vibrations to the planet by not letting them go. Everything could move forward at a rapid rate if humanity just dropped the bullshit and stepped into the heart and stepped into love, period. I was just reading the comments from uh, this whore, Rua Rain. Oh, I was just <clears throat> Fuck you, bitch. You are the problem. She said, I'm here to stay. No, bitch, you ain't. We'll be very clear about that. You are not here to stay, by the way. You are going to be one of the first to die. Congratulations. Because this is going to be... Hopefully, I pray, I can feel it on my bones, though, the last stream that you guys will watch with mom upstairs in that room. And you, Rua, ah. will be the first to leave this planet. Because you came on the mom's ascension stream and fucking yeah. mocked her. Thank you, mom. <laughs> what the fuck are you doing? What the fuck are you doing? We have watched so many beings say things about mom, come at mom, try to project onto mom, and put all of the hatred that they have for themselves onto mom. You guys have no idea. Watching mom continuously, you, you guys have never had to pack up mom in the middle of the night because she's getting kicked out somewhere, and she has no idea where she's going to go next. You guys have no idea what it's like to travel with mom across country when they are trying to kill you and they are trying to kill mom. We do. We witnessed it firsthand driving to Florida. They were trying to all out kill mom and us in the process. She has been kicked out of places left and fucking right. Everything mom did. And she was in such a state. I'll never forget this. I'll tell you this story too because of how much they tried to put mom in fear of everything so she couldn't enjoy shit and it was right after you know in florida when um when father left to go on his mission <laughs> um to jail and mom was staying at a resort and it was hope i and fm at the time and mom was just in an unstable state father wasn't there Larry's doing the best he can, but, you know, father's not there. So she was keeping to herself, trying to keep herself stable. You know, we played some Uno. <laughs> and all of a sudden, we start getting calls from security.
that were smoking in the room and mom had been very clear we could not smoke in the room. This is how much fear that they put into mom. God can't fucking smoke a cigarette in her own room because she doesn't want to get complaints and kicked out. She had to go into the bathroom and like hide and smoke. That's what they did to mom. So mom had incense burning and just that phone call from security saying that we were smoking in the room, which we weren't, wiped all the joy mom had. Every ounce of joy mom had was gone in that moment. And she was put into a state where now again she had to worry about whether or not she was gonna get kicked out of that place. And then we had to move her again. And she couldn't even really enjoy that place that she was in. That's mom's endless experience here. Endless experience. Every This is the first time mom's ever had stability. Thank fucking God that she has a beautiful home and it is completely stable. But you have no idea what it took for mom to get this. And I am so over every person who comes to project onto mom and say these horrible things about her. And it makes me want to kill all of them. But I won't for mom's sake because she loves humanity. And so we love humanity, but those beings are gonna pay their fucking karma. Because the sick things that they projected onto mom that she had to take on every single day is heartbreaking to watch because if anybody met her in person, they would know how sweet and beautiful and fucking amazing she is. But they don't. And they don't care to know either because they're so fucking apathetic about everything. They're apathetic that the cabal runs this fucking planet or did. They're apathetic that children are going missing every fucking day. They're apathetic that God is dying. They don't care because they don't fucking care about themselves. Mom is the only one who cares about every single being on this planet and loves every single being on this planet. She is the only one who gives a fuck. And no one gives a fuck about her. And I'm just grateful for the few beings out of billions who have made it and who have support mom. You mean everything to us, and I know you mean everything to mom, because out of eight billion people, you chose to give a fuck about God, and we love you for that, because we love God with everything that we have. And I just pray that all those beings who came for mom get their karma instantly. And I will, I will enjoy watching it, to be honest with you. Every single one of them. I love you, Mom. <laughs> Just, you have to be really fucking stupid to not see what's going on in this planet. And by this time, to not choose love in everything you do. It's just beyond words that, you know, there's a lot of past that's fuckery and right now the most important thing is mom ascending and getting off this planet and letting her children face what they've created. The information's all out there. She's done everything to make it so easy for everybody to wake up. <laughs> and still, people are in self-importance. They're still comfortable in their little corners of the world, not caring about anything else but themselves and their small families. And this is just so stupid, so it's a tragedy. It's time to wake up and to really give it your all, your everything. With each breath, with each moment, to always be in your heart, to always be love in action, with passion, with commitment, with clarity, with focus, with all of it. And the people who are choosing lower, projecting shit, like, it's just you're stupid beyond belief. I don't even know what to say. It's like you're just stupid. And 
I don't even know what's gonna wake you up. I. <sighs> yeah. What do you mean? Fuck humanity, you're pieces of shit. Yeah, I was just reflecting on, you know, just recalling this mission with mom and, you know, how much mom's been through and the experiences that have really, that people, you know, are going to see on the tapes that we've witnessed and we've been so grateful to witness is, you know, being by mom's side for as long as I have and I know Aurora has as well, you get to know mom on a level where you know she's God, but she's still going through the human experience. And that is the hardest thing to comprehend, where she is so down to earth, so humble, but is the absolute queen of the universe. And how she can be so humble knowing who she is and give everything up, go into the forest, be grateful for the smallest little things and especially when we were in this small like 15 foot trailer thing in Oregon and just mom was grateful to have stability for a short amount of time because before that we didn't know where we were going to go until we found this little RV on Snake River Road <laughs> and it was you know it was such a grand experience where mom at that point was still could still walk and enjoy herself to the extent that you know wasn't she couldn't enjoy herself that much, but we made the most of it. But we were in the back, and our beds were set up next to each other. It was like it was like summer camp, pretty much. <laughs> we were just sitting, and we had our beds set up, and we would just sit next to each other all day and just talk, and really just got to know mom on a personal level where humanity doesn't have that opportunity to get to know mom on a personal level, nor do they want to. And it's just that mom is God. And why wouldn't you even want to sit there to even know her experiences or know her on a human level of just listening to what she has to say and what she's been through throughout her life. The stories are so powerful. They're so full of wisdom. And she's so humble and down to earth about everything. And you can just feel it. And humanity can't see themselves where they constantly do that to each other they judge they project they blame they look at people because they look a certain way they won't go near them or they'll they'll avoid them and that's what they've done to mom and that's why everybody that comes on and sees mom now they judge and they project their energy and what they think mom is doing when they don't know shit and they don't know what mom has been through she's been through the fucking ringer and at least for the last two fucking nightmare for mom every day is a living fucking hell that she's still here and we have been blessed to see before things really started to get bad and when she could dance and sing and be in joy and that's again the hardest thing to watch is how the joy has been sucked out of mom where she can make any experience joyful she'll turn an RV into a fucking disco party with nine people and make it fucking pop and she'll make anything grand that's mom but now in these moments where she can't even do that she yet doesn't have the capabilities the strength the moments because she's doing 13,000 other things to get this planet ready for ascension she doesn't have time to focus on parties and celebrations for herself because she's putting humanity first and everything else before herself that she doesn't get these enjoyable moments anymore mom makes everything fucking phenomenal she'll take the fucking i don't even know she'll take a porta potty and make it like the biggest ripper that you've ever seen in your entire life because that's mom and that's the energy she brings and when you're around that there's something that you feel for the first time that you've never felt and that's unconditional love and you will never feel that with anybody outside in 3D illusion land. You'll only get it with mom and now father because they unconditionally love everybody. 
And when you hear mom and you hear the way she speaks and how she forgives and all of her stories and how powerful they exude every wisdom and every principle, everything that mom talks about in every article she's posted, she has put her money exactly where her mouth is because she walks her fucking talk and she has since the day she fucking was born. And there is nothing that anybody can say. She's always been in integrity. She's always been in right action. And she continues to push for that. She's the only person on this planet that can say they've been in integrity and in right action their whole entire life. Humanity cannot say that. So you might want to sit down and, and rather than shit on God, take a couple lessons from God because she's the only way you're going to get out of the illusion. You know, Daddy was just coming through daughters and they were sharing about when Mom was 16 and... They made the. They went to the, you know, the JFK thing in Dallas, and uh, they made a recording of Mom singing, and Ashtar was coming through. You know this story? When did she when she recorded Barbra Streisand? No, let it be. Yeah, Daddy took him to a bar, and uh, he made him give her a drink. Remember yes. that? Yes. Yeah. Said she's yeah, 16. Yeah. Give her a drink, yeah. and. Daddy, of course, made a recording, a, sec a cassette tape recording of Mom singing, C Commander Ashtar was in. Let it be. So there's that recording out there, children. Another thing you stole from God! Linda. Return it! It's Mom's. Everything, it's, everything belongs to mom. This is her planet. This is her universe. All of creation is hers. She is the divine giver. And she's given it all to us. And we, we've all taken advantage. We've all been lazy. And especially humanity. You keep choosing it. You keep choosing this laziness. You keep choosing this complacency, comfortable where you are without consideration of everyone else. And you're going to face everything you've done. You got more. Bring it. Who the fuck is that? I don't know who that is. Get it. Get it. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> okay. Like, it's so simple. What you guys are doing, what you're allowing other people to do around you, it's all part of you. You're enabling everything by not choosing love, by not coming to mom, by not fully supporting her in every moment. You're allowing the destruction, the killing of her. You're allowing it, it all. The only place you should be is here, because mom, <laughs> she's God, she's the all. She knows everything about everything, and only in this divine wisdom can we truly even begin to heal and help and to transform all this bullshit. You don't know better, nobody knows better. How could you ever know better than God? How can anybody know better than God? Your full support is what is needed here. And you not doing it, and you thinking, you feeling you've done enough when you haven't done anything, is treason. That is treason. You don't know better. You don't know what you're doing. You need to surrender to mom fully. And she just wants the best for all of us. And she knows what's best for all of us. She knows all the subconscious bullshit everybody holds on to. She knows the programming. She knows it all. Nobody else fucking knows it. You need to be here. You need to step up and full send your support in everything you do and give everything you have back to mom so she can transform it, process the bullshit, and give it back to the children. 
to the lovers, to the givers. words left for humanity, to be honest. Um, it's hard to even continue to, to share the same things every day that mom has been sharing for 14 years and 44 years in her entire life. And because even the people that were closest to mom on her journey who heard the wisdoms and saw the brilliance of mom still can't see her. So... <clears throat> What do you keep saying to people who are choosing ignorance, who are choosing death at this point? What do you keep saying to them? And I don't know the answer to that anymore. I really don't. I only know that mom has to go because this bullshit has to flip. And they need to go through it. They need to go through it. They need to feel it. And that's the only way by not having mom anymore to take from, mm -hmm. not having mom to support them, not riding her coattails anymore. That is how humanity will have to get it. Because on mom's time anymore is not fair. It's not fair that her and father are together for the first time in 19 billion years and they have to spend it like this. It's not fair that the collective unconsciousness comes in every day and tries to pull them apart. It's not fair. So I don't know what the answer is, but I know what I would love is for mom and father to leave and to have their peace and their joy and let humanity figure the fuck out themselves. Let them take the hits for once. Let them go through it. Let them spin. Let them get what they've been asking for, which is a rude awakening. Let them have that. Because mom's done everything else. If they're not gonna get it up until this point, they're not gonna get it. And they don't deserve mom. They don't. They don't deserve her to be here. They don't deserve the energy she puts out every day. They don't deserve how much she loves them. They don't deserve shit. So I have no more words for humanity. My only words are that I pray every day that mom and father ascend out of this bitch. <laughs> That's what I got. And as far as that, I'll be wearing my I told you so t-shirt and my I told you so button every day after that. And it will be thrilled to tell humanity that they fucking missed all of it. And that will be the only way that they will ever get it. They will watch these tapes and they will be an absolute horror of what happened, of what happened here on planet Earth. This will be the biggest piece of her story that will ever be shared. That God came back to ascend this planet, the final planet, to ascend all of creation back into oneness. And the whole planet missed it. And the whole planet tried to kill mom. This will be the greatest story ever told of what mom accomplished. And at the end of all of this, that she fucking did it. It will be the greatest story ever told. And everybody will have to watch the tapes because nobody showed up to witness it. Except for a few beings. And that is the karma. And I just pray every day that that is what is coming. Because that is what they deserve. <clears throat> Yeah, we've all been in treason, some of us more than others. <clears throat> um, to all the light workers out there who have had awareness of who mom is, and you, and you still bypass her, fuck you. <laughs> Hello, Jack. <laughs> Jack, fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> the, the entire. All of creation, the multiverse, is at stake. Mom dies, you die. <clears throat> I just cannot understand how... Check, check. check. Cannot understand how you would have awareness of mom and bypass her like that. Um, it's just, it's unbelievable. And everyone out there...
Everyone on Yippee chat too, everyone who has awareness of mom and hasn't just gone full bore, like throw all your eggs in this basket, fuck you too. It's like we're all taking advantage, we're just using mom for our convenience. Um, it's time to stand up, it's time to fucking unite for mom and ascend, she needs to go. Yep, and I'm pretty much at the same boat of Aurora where, you know, that word done, we've watched it, we've experienced it, and we only got a small piece of it, of what, and we're just the witnessers to what mom goes through every day. We've just witnessed it, and we're done, and we're tired of it, and we're tired of coming on live stream telling everybody she's still here. We're tired of telling everybody how dumb humanity is. It's stupid at this point that we have to, <clears throat> we've been saying the same shit on every live stream every single day for two and a half years now that we've been here. We've watched mom go through the ringer. We're not even in a small ass percentage. We're not even in the same experience as mom. She's going through it alone. We're just watching it play out and being the support, that's all we can do, is just watch. So, mom's experience is the most atrocious thing that's ever happened in all of creation, and to watch it is excruciating, every day. Every day for two years, planning for the ascension, doing dry runs for the ascension, because humanity's not ready for the real thing, and now here we are, moments away from the real thing, and we're in the same fucking ring around that we've been in for two years. We do have more support out there, and we obviously have new team members that have come in, which we're very grateful for, but it's very minimal. And most beings only really found mom at the beginning of the year, the end of last year, not too long ago. And it's been a long ass time for mom praying for support, praying for someone, for more people to give a shit. And I can't even imagine, it must be an unfathomable level of exhaustion that mom is experiencing in these moments. And she said it one day when she posted a photo, she's like, I look tired. And mom's not a tired person. Mom has the most energy in all of creation. She looks exhausted. She looks like she's been through the ringer because she fucking has. Every day pushing every single day fighting for her life and everybody on this planet continues to not care continues to serve the lower when all you have to do is wake up all you have to do is see the dysfunction of the illusion not choose it get into the heart and your heart will lead you to mom organically just like everybody else that's found their way to love as one found the live streams, whatever it may be, you have to be a certain amount in the heart to feel mom, to see her, to come on the website or the stream and actually digest the information because the ego will just bypass it. You have to do a certain amount of work and step out of the illusion and be like, I don't want to participate in this anymore. All of humanity wants to be done with it and wants a solution, but still keeps feeding the problem. The problem is not going to get better when you continue to add fuel to the fucking fire. It's when you walk away from the fire and you let it burn and you let it just crash and die out. That's how humanity has to walk away from the dysfunction that they have allowed themselves to be in at mom's expense. Everybody is capable of choosing love. Everybody is capable of being in the heart. Look at the people around us. We're the biggest fucking retards. We are. We're a bunch of fucking retards and we made our way to God. Everybody can make their way to God. Every single person. Trust me. If I can make it to God, if the people sitting next to me, if Aurora, every the first contact ground crew team, you guys all know who they are. If they can make it to God, all of humanity is capable of making it to God, period. There's no excuse. And mom sees that. She's like, literally, you guys are all retarded and dumb, and you made your way home, so I'll give you props for that. There really is no excuse for humanity at this point. The amount of work mom's done, the team, we laugh and make jokes about it, but it's true. It's fucking true. 
everybody is capable. Every single person. If you know people's experiences before they find mom, the things that they've done, the dumb shit that they've done in 3D and they still woke up to God, anybody can fucking do it. Any, sing any fucking being can do it. And that's why mom's made it possible. She goes, incoming banana story. I'm fucking dumb. <laughs> George, we made it. You can. <laughs> Trust us. You can do it. <laughs> you can do it. <laughs> so, everybody is capable, and unfortunately, most missed it. And we're tired of saying the same thing, repeating the same things that mom has told us years and years on end to tell humanity, and we're still in the same spot right before mom's full ascension with father. So, and Rob goes, a pro wrestler, lol. Yeah, seriously. Come on. Come on. Come on. You can do it. <laughs> Everybody's capable. You just have to be at a level of fucking surrender and listen. And that's what I really appreciate about some of the ambassadors have shared, like Deanna and Rob and all of them. When people come on the stream and just start running their fucking mouth and asking dumb shit questions, the thing that they always say back is shut up and fucking listen before you open your mouth. Listen first to what they have to say and what they're sharing, the wisdom from mom, because that's what it takes. It's not about ramping all these dumb interrogator questions. It's not about you. It's about listening to what God has to say. And because God can't say it anymore to you guys on camera, you guys have to unfortunately, sorry, listen to us. <laughs> sorry, that's who you got, is that you didn't want to listen to God, this is what you got. This is who you got to listen to, who's passing along the fucking message. Enjoy. And then people get so curious about it. It's like, well, you didn't listen to God for fucking 14 years. Here we come. And that's what mom said. She said, they will no longer listen to me. And that's why the team has to do it now. And that's sad. That was heartbreaking. When she said that to the team, she was like, I can't. They will not see me. Somebody else has to do it. And that was the hardest thing to hear when mom was like, humanity cannot see me. They cannot see me they cannot hear me they will never accept me as source you guys now have to do it go get them go give them the codes <laughs> go out there kick their asses ream them don't take no shit you go get humanity now because they cannot see me i love you and that was hard and you guys can't imagine what that's like that mom had to pass the torch not because she wanted to and it was time but because she had no fucking choice she had no choice. She had no more moments. That's why father passes along the messages. That's why the team does. Because mom can't do it. You guys can't see or hear her. So this is what you got. Are you happy? Enjoy. Enjoy what you got coming right now. <laughs> Thank you, daughter. Yeah. Beautiful. So we had shared the story of daddy taking mom to the bar in Dallas and making the cassette recording, ordering the bartender. How old is she? 16, get her a drink. <laughs> and mom was sharing, you know, she's she's got this song. Ashtar came in, we heard her of it. And she's looking at all these drunk people. And daddy's like, yeah, get out. And she's like, well, fuck, it's someone looking at me. And she just ruled this song. So let's play the song for her. Uh, karaoke song? We're going to sing for Mama and Daddy Reed, Let It Be. <sighs> treason, anyone? Treason. Mm -hmm. What's your reason for treason today? What's your reason for treason? Well, holding that cassette tape hostage from all of humanity would be a reason for treason. I feel we would all agree on that. Thank you, son. When I find myself in times of trouble, Mother Mary comes to me, speaking words of wisdom, 
let it be. And in my hour of darkness, she is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom, let it be. Let it be, let it be, let it be, yeah, let it be. Whisper words of wisdom, let it be. And when the broken hearted people living in the world, there will be an answer, let it be. But may be pardoned. There is still a chance that they will see. There will be an answer. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah, let it be. We'll whisper words of wisdom. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Let it be. Yeah, let it be. There will be an answer, let it be. Trisha. Down on my knees. Down nope. on my knees. Down on my knees. Trisha. On my knees, Trisha. I don't know if she was replying to somebody. I don't see a comment. Yeah. Yeah, that's why I got my screenshots. Not too sure about that. She says, take pictures. <clears throat> she goes, there's my whore sisters, left and right. Take uh -huh. pictures. <laughs> 
Not much left to say. Enjoy the sunscreen. What's up? Tara, Kelsey. Oh, are they on there? Oh, they're on stream? Mm. So as the truth is shared, as humanity is pushed with godly vibrations of unconditional love, to rip through the density so that we can once again see the flowers bloom. All will come back for forgiveness, asking forgiveness. Is there anyone that wishes to ask forgiveness? On the chat, anyone? Come forward, please. This is your moment with God. We feel you there. Come true with yourself. Be real for the first time in your life and allow God to free you. You have to do this. Please. Come forward. This is the this is the energetic of all humanity right now. They're shitting or getting off the pot. Greg asked for forgiveness. Greg asked forgiveness? Okay. Mama feels you, Greg. Whore. My dick's been leaving me. <laughs> well, fucking put your dick away. Buddha asked for forgiveness. Buddha asked for forgiveness. Okay, Buddha. Faith asked for forgiveness. Ooh. Candace asked for forgiveness. There's a whole lot of forgiveness. Bobby's asking for forgiveness. Sarah Elizabeth is asking for forgiveness. I ask for forgiveness, Mother. I ask for forgiveness, Mom. I ask for forgiveness. I beg you for forgiveness. Allie, Christian, Nancy, Christy, Leticia. All examples of love in action. Journeys. If it needs healed, then we heal it. Step up and take it. George. Greg's laughing. Is that laughing or was his dick laughing? Both. Emily Williams is asking for forgiveness. Igor. Mom said hope go first. Both whores. Okay. I'm right. That's it. Um, Ter Terry's asking for forgiveness. Katrin. Lucifer. L. Let's see a. Lucifer. Polarian. CC. Well, we're very grateful, children, that you come forward and you ask in these moments for forgiveness. For, of course, your horror continues. And we recognize as long as we have this horror within us. That it's a non it's a non stop. Yeah, mom asked me to go first. Here you go. She says deep go. Deep go. Deep go. Oh. Thank you, Mom, for giving me the honor to do this first. Mom, I ask for forgiveness. I take full responsibility for anything and everything that I have ever done that is out of right action, out of alignment, that has ever hurt you, that I've, if I've ever betrayed you. First betrayal, hope is carried, and that's why I said it. I take full responsibility for the betrayal. I apologize greatly for everything that I've done. In this lifetime, any lifetime, whatever lifetime it was, this one, I take full accountability and responsibility and I do ask for forgiveness. I'm sorry for anything that I've done that has hurt you, that has been out of alignment, that is any form of betrayal, going against God, hatred, unworthiness, ungratefulness, not surrendering, thinking I know better, controlling, self-importance, putting myself before God, anything, this lifetime, lifetimes before this, 
I take responsibility and accountability for all of it. And that is something that has been leading to deep unworthiness, this betrayal of hurting mom, of going through this experience and it has eaten me alive for this and I've never fully gotten over myself to connect fully to mom in the heart and she saw that last night and she called me out on it and you know I couldn't see it for a long moment. Robin's been on my ass for the unworthiness for probably since I've been here mm -hmm. and I've held on to it and that stopped me from being who I am, being what I'm capable of being for mom, and she knows that we all know better, and I always know better than to do dumb shit. If there's anybody on this team that knows better not to be stupid, it's me. I've been with mom for two years, I've been by her side. To betray her, to be in any form of defiance is fucking retarded on my end, and I have done dumb shit. And I wish, <laughs> I love you, Mom. And to know that I did something, I betrayed Mom, I hurt her, is the, you know, that is the worst feeling that you could ever experience. And if you don't feel upset about it, then there's something wrong with you. And I feel that deeply. I, I'm definitely feeling that passion for mom and to know that I have heard her, that I am the first one. I take full accountability and responsibility for my energetics, for all of humanity, any energetics that have come through me, that I've acted out in defiance, that I've allowed to hijack me, to pull me away from God, to be any less then I know I'm capable of being in divinity. I take full responsibility and accountability for all of it. Anybody that has hurt mom, I'll take it all on for everybody. Please, I just want her to go. I will take it all on for humanity. I really don't care at this point. Whatever it takes, everything, it, I put it all on me, mom, seriously. I will take it all on. I take responsibility for my own energetics, for being out of alignment, for hurting you, for not being there when you need me the most, for not serving you in full integrity, for being a bitch, for being a whore, for being everything, for being a full retard, for being dumb, I will take accountability for every single ego energetic that I am still holding on to, the unworthiness, all of it. If it gets you back, I'm fucking ready for you to go and transform this for good. Any of that snake bullshit, any Lilith whore, Isis, Kali, dark feminine bullshit, get it out. I'm I take full responsibility for all of it. All of it, all of it. Thank you, Mom. Please accept my forgiveness. I fully surrender to you. I fully surrender to Mother of all creation. I fully surrender to the divine plan. Mother and Father God, I am in full surrender to everything. And I'm asking for forgiveness for my betrayal. I love you, Mom, and I love you, Father. I will absolutely, from the bottom of my heart, ask mom for forgiveness and because I know how much I love mom and I know how much I have, oh, how much passion yeah. I have for her. Stories of Snake River. Snake River? <laughs> Stories of Snake River. Remember when you said to mom, how do I do it? Did she share it with you? I'm not exactly sure of the, the one situation that father was mentioning the when mom didn't have the support, but I feel 
the story that mom wants me to share is of course the one that was the biggest event that happened in Snake River when we were there which was mom getting attacked by all of humanity um, and that was definitely the, the first experience that I got to witness of how much mom deals with it and, and that was the start of hum humanity poisoning mom to uh, and that's just, that's never stopped to this day of the, the poison and the energy that mom's taken on from the, the collective that isn't choosing her. Yeah, you shared that you shared that. You said, you know, you could put, come to full realization now that nobody was supporting her. And you said to her mom, how can I, how, I'm taking it out. I want to take it out for me. How do I do it? Remember that? Feel into that. started is that mom went down for a moment and there was no masculine that was awake as well and, and mom got attacked by the collective and that's when she had the vision of humanity. She was a little little girl in the center of all of humanity getting sucked off of and she was screaming for them to stop. And when she got out of that vision is when she started to get energetically attacked because she had no, the shields were down, there was no support. So Robin, at the time, we didn't know what was going on, so Robin just had us going around from place to place, <coughs> just tr trying to get mom stable. So at first we ran outside, and we ran into the grass, and we set everything up, and then he said to move her into the bathtub. So we moved her into the bathtub, and still nothing was working. And eventually mom, you know, she's in the bath for some moments, and we got her out and she was like, it's still coming in, it's still coming in, I don't know what to do. So, <laughs> mom, my butt hurts. <laughs> and we didn't know what to do and, and that's when Larry was there and Larry helped mom get back to being stable. And while, while all this is happening, uh, Lulu is still asleep through the whole event, so he missed everything. He wasn't uh, present for that. So we get mom out, Robin's like, just get her, you know, out into the, the river and get her out just looking at the sun and the mountains, just have her sit down after this whole event and we can, you know, debrief and collect our thoughts of what the fuck is going on. So us three went outside and we were just sitting there and mom was like, my body is 100% infected by humanity. And... That's all Robin has to say right now. And she was just looking at him and she was like, okay, well, it may be time for me to jump in the river then. <laughs> and we were just, we, had, we were like, okay, we don't know what to do. Mom's like, just put me down the river, let me float down there, and we'll, <laughs> we'll move along if that's the case. If this is it, if this is the end, just put me down the river if I'm infected and I'm, I'm not going to make it. We were like, no, no, it's not going to happen. And we were sitting there, we were just talking about everything and mom's experiences and this is the best part, <laughs> is she finally realizes that Lucifer is still sleeping. So she, and Robin's like, go get him. And I'm like, okay. So I go up to go get him and I wake him up and I'm like, hey, your mom wants to talk to you. And he just went back down and I went back to mom and I was like, he, he's not listening to me. He doesn't want to get up. And so Robin was like, oh, heck no. And so Robin comes through mom and you just see mom stomping on all of these rocks going through. Robin is totally taking over her vessel. She is flying like you've never seen her fly before. Walks up, to, opens the RV door, slams it, just gets right in his face. and is like, wake the fuck up. I'm dying. I'm 100% infected by humanity. Don't you give a fucking shit. Wake up. And... She comes to, she's like, holy shit, that was Robin. <laughs> she was like, I don't even remember how I got over here. <laughs> she was like, I don't even know how I walked. I don't know how I got even, I don't even know how I walked in these moments. This is great. She's like, wow, that was Robin. Thank you, Robin. Okay, I'm going to go back, look at the sunset now. Thank you. <laughs> and pretty sure it was the same night as well where, or a couple days later, <laughs> I want mom came through Robin, or Robin came through mom. 
about three to four times in a span of like two months. This dude was hot on the trot. So after that, Lucifer comes out, we're all having our debriefing conversation, and then the next time mom's, okay, let's go back to the RV, I'm getting cold. So we're walking all back, we're all laughing, having a good time, and all of a sudden mom's walking back, do 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 and she, she trips and she's about to face plant full forward onto the rocks. And me and, and, and father saw it too. It was, our faces were, we were dumbfounded. We were like beyond flabbergasted that this happened. And <laughs> um, mom's going down full vertical, about to just face plant. And you just see mom pretty much horizontal at this point. Like she's about to go down. And she just lifts back up and keeps walking like nobody's business. Like it didn't happen. I don't know if Larry saw it or not because it was so quick. And me and father just looked at each other and we were like, oh, did you see that? And we were like, yeah, mom, you almost fucked, you almost like fucking face planted. She was like, yeah, I know, it was Robin. He got me. And we just keep going along. We're like, oh, keep going. going. And either it was that night or, the, or a couple nights after that, um, we were all in the RV and the Airbnb owner was like, well, I'm going away for a little while, so if you guys want to stay in my house, you can. And, <laughs> um, and he was like, you can stay in my house if you would like it. And Mom was like, thank you for the offer. We'll consider it. You know, that's very generous of you. And we were talking about it. She's like, yeah, like, I don't know. You know, it's very sweet that he did that, but I don't really want to intrude on their space. And at the time, we were sitting in the RV, and I'm pretty sure Lucifer would not shut the fuck up for hours and mom's just trying to lay down she doesn't feel good she's just she's like i just need a break for the night and he would not stop talking so mom's like okay you want to play games all right get me into the other house so me and larry we pick everything up and we start walking over to the other house and we set mom up in the airbnbs the main home get everything set up in this beautiful bed she's like fuck you lucifer i'm good don't bother me for the rest of the night. You can sleep in the RV. I'll sleep in the house. Just leave me the fuck alone, okay? Thank you. And we're just sitting there finally at peace. And here he comes <laughs> through the porch. <laughs> he just opens the sliding door and he just keeps, he comes in. And he just sits back down and picks up where he left off all over again. Keeps talking, talking, talking. Mom's like, shut up. I don't want to hear what you have to say. I'm trying to relax. I've been through enough the last couple of days. Like, I just want to relax, please. And he didn't listen. So mom's like, fuck you. I'm out. Get me back to the R get me back to the RV. And mom picks up and she's just out the door. And she's out like a fucking, I don't even know, bullet train, out the door, and she's stomping on all these fucking rocks, all these, there's goat heads. If anyone knows Dora, the they're fucking bitches. Mom's stepping on everything. She's just flying. I'm running behind her with her flip-flops. I'm like, do you want your shoes? <laughs> I'm like, do you want your shoes? And she just can't hear me. She just goes back and she sits back down. She's like, okay, that was Robin. <laughs> she's like, I just needed to get the fuck out of there. And she's like, yeah, just, you know, bring my stuff back over. I'm, I'm going to lay down for the night. And we left Lucifer over there, who eventually did, again, follow us back to the RV to continue his rant until Mom went to bed. And um, me and Larry had to go back and get mom, the rest of mom's stuff. And we go into the bedroom and I'm pretty sure it was Lulu. He had left the sliding door open because he was going out through the sliding door. And it's buggy as fuck up there. We're in the deep mountains of Oregon. There was, Larry remembers, I don't even know, 1,000 mosquitoes in the bedroom within a matter of like 20 minutes of the door being open. And we were like, oh shit. And we go back to mom, we're like, um, mom, you know, are you okay for a few minutes? Because there's about a thousand mosquitoes that we have to kill in, in the uh, house now because they're there. Mom's like, yeah, please take care of it. Like, please uh, <laughs> take care of that mess and then come back. So me and Larry spent like an hour killing all these bugs. And we get back to mom and she finally got to go down, and I'm pretty sure, I'm trying to recall if that was the same night of the Sixth Seal, which I'm pretty sure it may have been. Um, no, it was a different night. No, Larry said, I all, remember. All the nights in Snake River all just blend together. <laughs> um, but there was, so that was the end of that night. There was another night, though, pretty similar to that, where mom was in a lot of pain, and 
she had started the seal. She had asked me to do research. Uh, Jermaine had come to her and said, start researching all religious texts and pull out everything that pertains to mom, even if they change the name from he's to she's. Like, let's just start gathering, you know, more religious proof that, you know, in any religious text, mom is in it in some way, shape, or form. So we were working on it, and the seals uh, started to come up in conversation with mom because mom has done Bible research um, years prior to these moments. And we were talking about the seals and we were discussing current events and things that were going on and, and mom was explaining how she had felt that a certain number of seals had already been released throughout the journey, that they were already out there, that she had already done them. And she was like, well, what do I really, you know, have left to do for this? And there was a part of the seals and it was, we were just watching, it was very interesting, a lot of like the biblical stuff was happening at the time with volcanoes, earthquakes, all these things, she's like, I feel like it's the seals being released. And one night, we're, we're just hanging out and, and talking and mom's like, there's something on my back. And it was a ball like this big of energy on mom's lower back and I'm like, what the fuck is that? And Robin comes through and he's like, it's the sixth seal. And we're like, Oh my God, the sick seal, holy shit, what's going to happen? <laughs> and Robin was like, you have to get it out. So um, we started working on it and I'm pretty sure one of either a father was there or he wasn't there yet, I'm not sure, but the guys were helping work on it and push it out and then I, I was helping too and I watched it where... It started out the lower back, and the energy at first really wasn't moving, and then we really had to get into it, and it was fucking painful time for mom, of course, and I watched this ball of energy, probably the size this big, go up mom's back, and it went within a span of like maybe like 15 minutes of doing this, and it slowly went up to mom's neck, and then it disappeared, and then mom went to sleep that night. <laughs> It was such a big release of energy that she had to just immediately put herself into processing. Um, I mean, it was huge. It was fucking massive. And I've never seen um, energy like that after working on mom and, and, and stuff like that. I've never seen energy move like that out of mom's body. It was fucking crazy. And that was the sixth seal. And after that, things started, you know, we could see the earth changes and confirmations that the seal had been released. And of course, um, mom had to work on the seals again. And the seventh seal was the biggest one, which was the start of the seven bowls and the seven trumpets and all that fun stuff. So that was a very big experience, you know, to see mom go through that, how fast the energy moves in mom's body. It's completely, you know, it's just a different, it's not human, pretty much. And... <laughs> And I do know, of course, you know, a part of my betrayal to mom, and I know she mentioned this to me last night, is the lack of sharing these stories with everybody. You know, that is a big betrayal to mom because we were in the experience with her. And at that time, it was only me, Larry, and for part of it, and father as well. <clears throat> and that is, you know, a big betrayal to mom is not sharing those experiences, sharing that wisdom um, with others. And team members, you guys out there on the live stream, it is a huge, it is a betrayal. It is the first betrayal because it's it's shutting others off from mom's experiences and the wisdom. Mom doesn't have the moments to recall all these things. She recalls, you know, a, a pile of moments in her life that really have stood up. Mom doesn't recall day-to-day -day life experiences that have happened. She has a handful of stories that are very <clears throat> significant, but it's up to us where, you know, we are responsible for sharing and being the voice for mom and especially in that time of being the one that was with her 24-7 you know I have a lot of things that mom has trained me to do and to know and to share and there was a good portion of this mission for at least the last year and a half where I didn't do it and that is a huge betrayal to mom where I shut down I didn't share those things I let my ego and my unworthiness and I watched myself be a completely different person and think I was evolving when I wasn't. I thought, you know, shutting up and letting others, you know, walk all over me and, you know, try to just manipulate the situation, you know, that, you know, being compassionate and letting that happen was okay. But it was actually hurting mom more by me doing that. And that is why that is betrayal, because you know better. And for a long time, 
I allowed my unworthiness to come through other people where they wouldn't listen. And a lot of people, um, similar to Aurora, you know, they don't want to hear what we have to say about mom because they don't like the tone of the voice. They don't want to, they want compassion. They want, you know, foo-foo, fluffy ways to explain things. And that's just not how mom trained me to be. That's not how mom is in these moments. She's very compassionate, yes, but she is very tough love. And the collective needs right now is tough love. They don't need weak sauce. And I allowed myself to be the opposite. I, you know, would just, I would avoid call outs. I would just hold my breath. I wouldn't say things to people because it would, it would be an immediate trigger. And that was mom's energy. It stopped me from sharing my experiences because it seemed like nobody gave a shit. And it really caused me to shut down and not be the person that mom trained me to be on this mission. She spent two years with me to make sure that there was somebody that could portray and share her message and her experiences and I let her down on that end and that's horrible that I allowed ego and this mission to pull away from mom's experiences and sharing that with other people because that's not fair to mom because that's wisdom that could have been spread across the planet and helped people wake up and it's made this process longer and more drawn out for mom which has created more pain and suffering for her and that's not fair that's what the ego wants to do is create more pain and suffering for mom, and that's why it'll do those things. And, and what's not fair? Daddy Reed's calling you out, bitches! Linda, Tara, Chelsea, come forward! Now! Please continue. They're on stream? I bet. Cowards. And it is a really big opportunity for everybody to feel into, you know, how not saying anything or not being the representation of mom or thinking, you know, being an ego or letting egos control you is correct. It's not. And at this point of this mission, mom doesn't need weak sauce. She doesn't need people crying over the tone of somebody's voice in a call out. They need to get over it. And if they don't like it, that's their fucking problem. And I allowed that to pull away from who I am. And that's, that's always how I am. And that's always how I've been. And that's been something that mom has said is, is one of the better qualities of myself is that, that passion for her and, and not standing up for her was showing that I, I lacked. I allowed that passion to get taken away from myself. I did it all to myself. I take full responsibility. I watched it. I knew I was doing it, and I didn't know how to get out of it. And the unworthiness kept me from telling, asking mom about it, of bringing it to mom about how I felt because I knew she was going through so much, and I didn't want to burden her more. But in turn, the more that I stuffed it down, the more I ended up hurting her because I didn't express what I was feeling and I couldn't have mom help me transform it or give me any advice of how to do it. And that was, again, causing more pain and suffering of not speaking up, of not communicating. Everything that mom has shared, she shared not too long ago, communicate with me more. And I didn't do it because I didn't want to burden her. And by the time I did communicate a couple days ago, it was, it was too late. So much had already hit the fan, so much had been built up, and I did the total opposite of what she told me to do. She was like, if things get there at the house, you know, get to be, you know, crazy, you need to come to me about it, don't just talk about it amongst yourselves. And I allowed that to happen. And I, because it was this guilt of not wanting to burden mom more with what she's going through, but knowing that mom will take time to correct these things that she cares to correct it because if those things continue to be out of alignment she's not going to ascend she needs to know so she can correct it so that she can fix those things and we can move forward with this ascension and that's why those energetics are betrayal to mom are the deepest energetics and the largest form of betrayal is the same thing with mom's earth family of of what they did of course to her was horrible of bypassing her all of the traumatic stories that mom has shared and the team has but you know what they've done that's worse is you know that they've had how many years with mom and they're not sharing their experiences with mom that one story about the hundred dollar bill with mom and Linda is one story upon probably millions of miracles that mom performed on her family while she was there. That is the biggest betrayal is knowing 
that mom has done all of these things and refusing to share it to bypass it to not have passion for mom to let egos shut you down so that you don't step into your divine essence because you block yourself all of that is such a large form of betrayal that people don't understand and that is what hurts mom because when you allow yourself to be pulled out of those frequencies that's when you know that is the betrayal because you're yourself you're allowing the 3d illusion to pull you out to suck you out and you stop being who you really are and you should never stop that for mom and never let egos walk all over you there's a time for compassion and love and there's a time to get your fucking shit together and you should never have anybody tell you what they think that you know and i allowed that i did it to myself because i couldn't transform my unworthiness and let it go and robin had to call me out and still continues to call me out on it and through this, mom, I'm very grateful because after seeing mom and knowing that, you know, it's all in your fucking mind. It's not real. Any of those experiences, anything you feel, the unworthiness, it's all in your mind. It's all through deep ego energetics that you just need to let go of. And that is the biggest betrayal is being unworthy of God, especially if you're in her field, especially if you spent two and a half years by her side and you feel unworthy still, that's embarrassing. And that's what I, I allowed myself to hang on to it. And that's a slap in the face to mom. It's not fair to her that I did that. And I take full responsibility for it all because I allowed this con to continue for mom much longer than it should have. And I know better. And that's always mom's line to me anytime I get called out is that, you know, I'm like, I see what I did or like, I feel upset about it. She's like, she's like, you know better, you know better. Don't beat yourself up about it and just move along. And that's how everybody has to be. And I'm very grateful for the training and the experiences that mom did give me to share with all of you so that you guys can be as grand as mom has trained me to be because it's just as her. It's the exact same. So I'm very grateful, I'm very honored to be here. I'm very honored for the moments that I have gotten to spend with mom. It has been an absolute blessing and fuck you humanity for missing it because those moments were, will always be the best moments of my life when it was, you know, me, mom and father, Larry, L, who, whatever masking at the time, you know, those were some of the best moments of my life. They were the best moments. Every moment with mom is the best. So thank you, mom, I love you so much. You're amazing. You're phenomenal. I can't say enough good things about you. I, there's really no words to say for gratitude for mom, for respect. Um, I've always shared the story on the live stream of when I first and I, well, here comes my unworthiness. I sat in the back corner for the first couple weeks of mission. The guys remember. Uh, I just didn't, I was just observing and laughing at mom's stories and just really trying to take it in and all of a sudden from across the room um mom points me out like through a like a sea of heads like i don't even know how she saw me in the back corner i was like there's 25 people i'm like i'm just trying to like figure what's going on here and i'm just laughing at mom's stories because they're funny and she like points me out across the room and i, I think i might have had like an aneurysm right then and there um when she pointed at me she's like you i'm like <gasps> she's like you're my best friend <laughs> i was like oh shit okay <laughs> i'm like sweet and then here I come, do to do sit right next to mom's bed. And I didn't leave there for like two years, pretty much. After that, after mom told me that, and that mom and I, you know, she's like, every lifetime we've, you know, always gone down together. She was like, we've, you know, she's like, you always been there for me. And all the lifetime, she's like, anytime we were killed, we'd look at each other and be like, are we going back down? Yep, okay. And we would just incarnate again. And hearing those stories with mom. <laughs> yeah. You know, it, it, you know, there. You hear these stories, and it's like, Hope, why are you so fucking dumb? Like, unworthiness is the last thing you should ever feel. And it's like, Yeah, I know, I'm retarded. I get it. <laughs> I've allowed myself to hang on to it. That's what it will do. It will pull you out. And, you know, that mom has shared, you know, many stories in in the day also as well with when we were sitting on Snake River. And we were talking, and after mom found out she was 100% infected with humanity, she, you know, we're sitting around talking, and she's talking about father, and she's talking about Larry, and she's, like, talking about super DNA and all these different things. And I'm just sitting there, and she's talking about the masculine, and she looks at me, and she goes, Robin says, you feel left out. And I was like, okay. And she goes, she's like, you were my first daughter. 
she's like, you were my first daughter, you were my firstborn, and, you know, it's actually you, and I was like, oh, wow, that's interesting, and here we are two years later, still deep in unworthiness, after hearing all of these things from mom, and it is absolutely retarded that I've held on to this, that I allowed myself to take myself out away from mom, through knowing this information and what she shared, whatever it may be, however it comes, it doesn't matter, at the end of the day, I've had a very important goal to be with mom and I've allowed myself to not fulfill that after mom has trained me so hard and so long to be an example to the team, <laughs> to be an example for others to help them, especially the feminine and you know all of those different things and to allow this to continue forward and you know just hearing those couple stories i always reflect back on it too i'm like how the fuck am i unworthy after having all these experiences with mom it's retarded and it's just this this stupid ego loop that you allow yourself to be in but that's what hurts mom that's the betrayal that again people don't realize is hanging on to these things when you have no reason to do it in the first place there's no fucking point why are you doing it when you've been the only one, the only feminine for months being next to mom, why the fuck do you feel unworthy? It's like, I have no answer for you because there's no, there's no logical answer. It's stupid. And so only a couple months ago, Robin bring it up again. It's like, this is stupid. I allowed that unworthiness and I allowed it to stop me from being who I really am for mom, for the team, for everybody. And that is the biggest betrayal because the team and the energetics of all houses could be in so much more better of alignment if I didn't do what I did and I take full responsibility for any dysfunction on this team. It falls back on me. Mom has shared many times that I, you know, she knows that when she's not here, she's going to rely on people to carry her message. And I, I know that it's, one of them is me. And I've known that for years. And I've allowed the team to continue in dysfunction. I've allowed mom to be hurt, to slow down her ascension and it's been my fault. It's my fault. All team dysfunction, which is humanity's dysfunction, is, is because of me. And it's because of unworthiness. And I take full responsibility for it all. And I apologize to mom. I apologize to father. I apologize to the team for not being the grandness that mom trained me to be, which stopped others from being their grander selves for mom. And that is betrayal. So I take full responsibility for that. I am so much better than how I've been at least the last year and a half on this mission. It's not, it hasn't been how mom trained me to be. And I'll never forget, she did tell one of the men in Florida, she said, yeah. she said, you know, this is gonna be the first time that Hope's separate from me and she's gonna struggle. And I was like, I'll be fine. Like, I don't know, you know, I reflected on that over the months of Florida, I was like, I'll be fine. I don't know what mom means by that. I'm strong. I can handle, you know, mom, I understand that I can't be there right now for energetic purposes and reasons. And now I know what she was talking about. It wasn't about physically and presently being okay. It was the, it was allowing myself to shut down. It was allowing myself to not be who I really am, to be fake. And that is not being real, is shutting yourself down to please other people, to cater to their egos. Everything I talk about and try to help people get through on sessions and everything, I still have continued to do. And not until the other day when mom <clears throat> lit the fire under my ass, I've been allowing it to go on for months and years on end. That is fully my fault. I take full responsibility for all of it. All dysfunction on this planet, it is all my fault. I take full responsibility and accountability for mom not being on the starships at this point. It is fully my fault, and I pray that mom is getting out of here at this point. I love you, mom. The last thing I've ever wanted to do is hold you back, and I, I'm deeply sorry that I have. And I have not been the example of what you have trained me to be. I love you. There's no words to express how much I love you, how much you mean to me. You know, there's, it's, it's at the point where I've had to really, you know, block out mom's experience when I'm not with her because if I feel into her for about five seconds, I will easily lose my shit, as you can tell. Because I've watched a lot of it. You know, I've watched how much mom has fought for everybody. 
and there's no words for the amount of gratitude I have there's no amount of words for the respect for the honor for everything I have the most the biggest admiration for mom and who she is there's no words to put to fully express how much I love that woman upstairs and how much I love father for being with her through all of this I love them both very much and mom is mom means everything just like I know to everybody else mom is everything to me and I allowed ego and dysfunction to pull me out of that passion and I'm not going to allow that anymore I love you I love you mom so much with all of my heart and I love you team and I love you everybody that's out there supporting mom thank you for doing that I'm very grateful I'm just gonna go grab a tissue <laughs> yeah. there's more There's more, it's, it's more in depth of when you were mama when you were alone. Okay. She wants you to share those experiences. Really get, get deep into it. You got it, Hope. You're doing great. Get it, daughter. There was a lot of experience here, and it's deep, and like all of ours, in different ways. Come on, hold get back up in there. Okay. Don't give up. Got it, Hope. I feel the one part of the story that really stood out to me was in the beginning where she was screaming, saying, I'm dying, wake the fuck up. And that's exactly the summary I feel for what you need to hear, humanity. And I speak to myself and to humanity, I suppose. But you need to wake the fuck up. And she's dying. where in Oregon, you know, mom and I were, you know, by ourselves or, you know, the mask and weren't around or Larry was spinning off somewhere. So it's just me and mom. And, you know, mom has shared a lot of things with me that, you know, at this point, you know, she's looking for me to share it. And there's a lot that I've allowed myself to block out for, you know, dumb reasons. I can't even give you a reason why. There's no excuse for it. Or a lot of things, you know, I remember bits and pieces of it, but the full memories of it, you know, are just not, are not there anymore. And, you know, that's retarded of me to block out, you know, the full experience of what me, you know, I was going through with mom and, and watching her do all these things. And, you know, some of the other big ones that, you know, have stood out, you know, of course, were when one day, you know, mom had felt you know, like complete shit, and she needed comfort and stability, and I rubbed her back for about the whole entire day, pretty much from like early afternoon to the evening. And that's when Larry asked if he could use the hot tub. <laughs> and mom was like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> but, um, you know, that, you know, there is, you know, no reason that anybody is incapable of doing these things. Mom, trust me, if I can do it, anybody can do it. <laughs> and you, there's a part of you that just will never not want to do those things for mom and support her. And in those moments, whatever it took, you know, rubbing her back for 12 hours, if that brought her joy, fuck it, I was going to do it. Holding a heater and falling asleep in the middle of the night so mom wasn't cold, fuck yeah, I'd do it. Because that's mom and that's... You know, that's what matters, you know, making sure she had food every night before she went to bed so she would eat because she wasn't eating and she was losing weight. And, you know, there's been a lot of amazing stories that mom has shared with me, you know, everything that mom has shared, you know, very magical, you know, her life, her, her journey, you know, how she knew who she was and, you know, definitely trying to help me 
me push through that unworthiness through a lot of it was, you know, just, you know, helping me see, you know, how important, she's like, you're the only one here, you know, you're the only one that's going to witness these moments in this RV, humanity is going to have to, you know, hear from you guys what you watched, and what did you watch? You watched humanity kill God, you watched humanity put God back on the cross, that's what she experienced when she, um, when she took back on, you know, the poison from humanity, and she was, you know, she was filled with humanity's energy, and it was just, it was poison to her. She like, I, they put me back on the cross again, and it was the second crucifixion of mom in those moments, and Larry was there, I watched most of it, I spent most of my moments, I didn't leave her side, and, you know, that I had asked her one day, you know, I was like, we were talking about something, and I was like, you know, what does my name mean? I don't know why I asked that question. And we had been talking about Father, and she was like, you honestly give me hope that Father's going to come back. And you've been the one that's told me and made me feel, you know, not crazy and trusting myself that Father's going to come back because as much as I feel he doesn't have to be here, I know I do need him as a part of this mission and you every day, because every day I told her, I'm like, he's going to come back. And we had to trust that every day that he was going to make it back to her. And, you know, every day she would, you know, be like, he's not coming. He's not going to make it. Something's going to stop him from getting back to me. He's, he's not father. He's not going to, he's not, you know, real. I'm not going to ascend. I'm not going to, this whole mission is fake. I'm not God. I'm crazy, I made everything up, this isn't real, you know, it's just all bullshit, and I was like, everything you say is real, everything you're doing, I'm like, everybody's gonna know what you did, and Father is going to come back, and every day we just had to reassure her, I had to tell him, like, Father will be back, Father will be here, and she's like, every day, you know, you gave me, you know, that strength to keep going every single day through it, and after... The house burned down, fun times. Um, we obviously made our way back to Presto and we got reunited with the team and we were sharing stories about Oregon and all the good times on the raft and in the not so good times with humanity poisoning mom and you could just kind of see like the, the team faces and they were just like kind of laughing, kind of shook, they didn't know what really was going on and you know mom turned to me and she looked at me and she was like she was like, they're not going to get it. She's like, they don't understand the experience that we had for a few months. And she was like, I just want you to know that, you know, you saved my life. That if you weren't there, I would have died. And, you know, that really struck me in a huge way of that. All it takes is one person, you know, being there consistently for mom to be there. And I'm very honored that it was me. I'm very honored with everything, you know, mom had shared. She took a lot of moments every day, a lot of dance parties, <laughs> um, a lot of music, a lot of, you know, really grand experiences. All the stories that, you know, mom shares over and over again, they just get deeper meanings. And, you know, that it was all training to just listen, to just be present, hear what she has to say, get the information. And that's you know, one time I did tell her, I was like, you know, thank you for being the first person, you know, so stupid, I was new to mission, I was like, oh, yeah, of course God's gonna be the first one to show you unconditional love, I was like, thank you for being the first person to show me unconditional love, and she was like, well, thank you for listening, <laughs> and at that point, I was like, oh, all you have to do is listen, <laughs> that's all you gotta do, is just listen to mom, listen to what she has to say, listen to her stories, listen to the live stream, the videos that she's put out, listen to the wisdom and you'll get there and you will understand everything about mom. It's just, you, you already know. You just have to listen, receive, surrender. Don't think you know better. And, you know, mom taught me a lot of that of just, you know, there is a point of surrender and then there's a point of, you know, you don't take no shit. And I watched that balance of, you know, you, 
surrender when it's really just gets to the point where it's not worth it, you know, the fight anymore, the taking of energy. I was extremely mad one day when mom gave Larry a pizza because he didn't deserve it. <laughs> and I started crying. I was so upset that mom let Larry eat this pizza. <laughs> and she was like, you just got to surrender sometimes. You just got to surrender. It comes back full circle. They get their karma. And then Larry got punched in the face. So it all came full circle eventually. So you know, there's a part of the surrender, but there's also that part of standing up where, you know, you have to find that balance, and it's just not folding every time to the ego that you, you know, you have to push for mom, you have to have that passion, that motivation, and, you know, that mom has said a lot of, you know, mom is, <clears throat> there was a moment as well when we were, uh, we did a live stream one day, and I completely, you know, very similarly lost my shit as to right now. And I went on a huge rampage about how much humanity sucks ass. And I was bawling on the live stream. And after the live stream, you know, me and mom hug. I'm like bawling my eyes out. And she was like, you know, I'm so grateful for you. But I can't say it any, you know, I just don't have the moments because I'm in so much pain. But know that I'm so grateful for you and what you do. And it's like all these experiences that mom has given all this right. advice, all of these grand experiences. And Let's get Hilarion in another call. We're going to get Hilarion in another call. Okay. Larry, you're getting a phone call. Burned it like a dog. Max is like, that fool. <laughs> oh, yeah, with the pizza. Larry burned it. He ate the good pieces, but left mom the burnt piece, and she woke up in the middle of the night to eat it. You have no burnt. idea how much that pissed me off when I came home and heard about that. Right, it was horrible. Oh it was so God. bad. Talk he, about premeditated. Yeah, he burnt the pizza, and he left mom the shittiest piece, and she woke up at 2 in the morning to eat it, because she was hungry, and she, like, takes hey. a bite. It was fucking hard as shit, and it was all fun. And um, it was hard as shit, and then mom would, like, so again, spit it out. She it. was like, He's what the fuck is phone. this shit? She was like, fuck you, you Larry. Yeah. <laughs> she was like... Oh. <laughs> Um, Go ahead, speaker. keep going. And yeah. mom and mom spits out the pizza. And she was like, screw you, Larry. You fucking gave me the shittiest piece of pizza. And she was like, honestly, jump in fucking Snake River and fucking kill yourself. Did you just hear his voice, too? I didn't hear it because I was oh. on my phone. Was it spooky? You're a whore. Oh, no. Time's running out, Linda! Time's running out, Chelsea! Time's running out, Tara. Robo mom. You fucking robot, get your ass home. What's your favorite story from Snake River, Larry? Something Snake River? You know. <clears throat> What's your favorite story from Snake River? Oh. <laughs> My favorite experience was most definitely the day after the uh, nose break incident. Um, 
which is where the communions were made and the lessons were learned. And it was so clear cut and I could just feel the love um, and forgiveness after it. And I got to uh, pull mom and dad and hope and I feel Buddha on the uh, on the raft around the river. And um, yeah, just kind of be the engine of the little boat there <laughs> and pull them around. So. I had a lot of fun doing that. That was my fun, one of my fun experiences there. Yeah, and the day the day after Larry got rocked in the face, Mom had him tie the raft around him, and he pulled us around the river. Okay, hey, hold the phone. You're not bypassing the nose story. All right, Larry, nose story. You better be real and true with it. And explain to humanity why it happened. Why it happened. What did you do? Explain to humanity why the, the nose break happened? Yeah. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I was in a very, very low state of consciousness. Um, one that didn't care about anything really other than disrupting mom's joy and ultimately um, wanting to kill her, you know, the goal of the ego is to kill God. So um, that was the frequency I was in. And um, like I mentioned before, um, I've never really had a level of humbleness um, when it came to other people and respecting space. And so um, the spiritual ego took over, or the super ego probably, and um, I felt that I could just do what I wanted, any any thing. I could just do what I wanted, and that's why, why I um, all that happened is because mom was in the RV and father could see the energy, and he was protecting the space. And I went and tried to shove past him, or essentially move him out of the way, as if you know to say I don't respect you at all. Just get out of my way. And, you know, as God's greatest protector, that's not a lot. So, um, <clears throat> previously before that, again, uh, oddly enough, there was uh, more pizza involved. I ate a full pizza to myself at the neighbor's house beforehand because I was spinning so hard. You're and then brought so that far, energy hey, over to mom and did. did all of what I just described. Well, I was away from mother. Feel it every day. The little things that you would do to manipulate, feel it in that. He's talking about every day leading up to the, the nose punch, what you did to mom. Meaning, the, the, he said the manipulation, the out of alignment energy, self importance, all that. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was a time coming, it was building. Um, there were moments where I, I was there for mom, but for a lot of the Oregon experience, I was spinning in self-importance most of the time. And it was building up and building up. And there was this energy that was present where it was like, oh, you, you guys can't do anything to me because it's just hope and mom. And, you know, they even said, like, wait till father gets here and the energy is balanced and everything is seen for what it is. And I completely bypassed it. And, um... It was an accumulation of so much self-importance that had gone on at uh, the location we were at, and um, it came to a head. And this go uh, this goes all around from the other pizza story you heard, messing up mom's food, um, you know, just sleeping uh, at the wrong times, um, <clears throat> not being a fully supportive masculine that I was supposed to be and that I was contracted to be in those moments. True. Um, what else? There were... Do you remember the night? Do you remember the night, <clears throat> like the week before Father got back? Um, that... Larry! Larry! Do you remember the night that she wouldn't leave Mom alone? <laughs> And mom told you to get out of the RV and you wouldn't listen. And you kept fighting mom. 
back and forth the entire time because she was like, get the fuck out of the RV, you're deep in fucking super ego. And Larry wouldn't listen. So it's fucking 2 o'clock in the morning. He won't shut the fuck up. I don't know what the fuck he's rambling on about. And at first, here comes Robin again, comes through Mom, grabs Larry, throws him against the fucking cabinets of the RV, and Mom's like, oh my god, I'm so sorry, that was Robin. <laughs> and even after that, like, that's all we could do was, with Larry, is, like, just attempt to try to, t like, <laughs> like, wrangle him down, but it was, we could never do it, because Larry, we're both very small, and Larry is over six feet tall. So the only thing that we could say is wait till father gets back because we knew that we couldn't handle it on our own. And after finally battling with him for an hour to leave the RV, mom's like, okay, well fuck you, then I'll leave the RV. And then we leave the RV to sit outside and then Larry walks outside. <laughs> He's like, I'm not leaving your side. <laughs> we were like, we want you to, we don't want you here. You're annoying. Um. Oh, I no, I was just saying that you finally came outside and you were like, I'm not going to leave your side, Mom. And Mom was like, I fucking want you to. You're fucking annoying. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I always felt like I was like always in the right no matter what. Like I was being a hero no matter what. And I'm not going to leave your side. It became whenever Mom, you know, exercised her own boundaries and her space and her willpower to say like, you know, you're in stupid right now, get away from me. Then I, it, it turned into this victim thing where I was like, I'm here by your side and I'm doing all this, why is that happening to me? And then when I was being um, with mom and, and Hope and I was uh, in a different energy, it was like to, it would switch over to this energy of power over and control. And like, you know, they would let me just walk around in this because like she said that you know there was an overarching energy in me and they were just like wait till father gets here and then when it got all flipped and the balance went, came back then I flipped into this victim role of like I'm here and, and why is this happening to me and it was just this overall like baby childish manipulation that was just taking energy from mom in whatever way it could yep So many times we caught Larry sleeping on a hammock. He'd rather catch fish than hang out with God. Self-important land. And we told him every day. We were like, if you're not going to get it, we just have to wait because Father will come and kick your ass. And he did, and that caused the nose break. And Larry, I don't even know how much really Larry remembers of it or what he said. And <laughs> that night, it was, a, it was a very, it was like one of the spookiest nights because it was just like a total hijack of Larry's energetics. Like, if he wasn't there, he was straight up the Antichrist. He was straight up Hitler energy. I don't even know how I can even describe, like, what... I can't remember what he was saying. It was just such, like, fantasy babble bullshit. And he was sitting outside the door just rambling on and on and on after he had gotten socked in the face by father. And mom's, like, screaming at him. She's like, you're the Antichrist! And he's like, how am I the Antichrist? He's like, I'm on my knees. <laughs> he yeah, couldn't see it. it. And um, what, what I gleaned from the experience altogether, um, because what had happened, I feel like maybe like a week or a week and a half before that, is I was stomping around in it again. And, um, you know, it all came down to self-hatred and and unworthiness at, at the at myself at the program you know what have you anything I could blame to not look at myself and um, about a week earlier mom and dad were just trying to have like a peaceful uh, morning out on the deck or something like that and I was stomping around really really very much in it again and I was blaming mom and dad for everything that I was experiencing and it, I was just doing this right in front of them and, um, you know, at one point I even, I had a knife that I put up to my heart, the pointy end up to my heart and told them both to just, you know, kill me or end me or whatever. You know, that's how in it I was. And, um, <clears throat> it's a, 
bad thing to look at, very stupid, you know, kind of like what I call the fool with the death wish programming, you know, who just thinks he can do anything and, you know, hates himself so much that I don't give a fuck if I die, you know, and it's like just one of the worst places to be in, and both of them sat there very peacefully and, and just looked at me like, you are the dumbest motherfucker that has come around here, and that was like a week prior, I feel, to the nose break thing, and it just is a reflection of where the consciousness was at, where mine was in those moments of the amount of self-hatred and how I could, like, even think that God would even do that to me or that I wanted them to, you know, it was all just such projection and reflection back um, for me to soak in and look at in the following weeks and after the break and all of that. Um, Mom said... Chelsea, encourage her. I I listened listened to Daddy through voice. Chelsea knew. Get him, Chelsea. Yeah, definitely, you know, out of, you know, Mom only has like a 50-50 with only having two sisters. So, she, you know, it's a very one or the other probability <laughs> that one was going to step up. And um, Chelsea is... Um, you know, the, her sister that mom has shared that she is going to make it. The other one is not. And, you know, that's heartbreaking for mom, but she knows that her sisters are perfectly capable of stepping up. And the one in particular, Chelsea, <coughs> is capable and she will get it. And mom has full trust in that and daddy as well. And that's why it's very important to mom. Um, you know, her family and why this keeps coming up is because her sisters are a big piece of this. Her family is a huge piece of this, like I said earlier about everything of her family, how much information they have about mom, her stories, her wisdom, all of that, and that they are capable of flipping it all back to mom and supporting her, even though they haven't for this whole mission. There's always a chance to, to flip it. Right, mom is so compassionate and she will forgive um, everything, if your heart is truly in the apology and you've learned the lesson and you see it, I mean, that's what God, in everyone's fucked up expectations and everything about what God is, you know, you would perceive her to be all forgiving, and, and she is. If you're not feeling forgiven, then you haven't forgiven yourself. Ding. Yeah, and that's just the, the most the biggest thing is that you have to forgive yourself first. Mom can't even get there and help you if you don't do it with yourself first. And everybody has to realize that, that you have to let it go. There's nothing you can do to change those things now, but you can change, you can change in this present moment. You can't change something that you've done that you know is out of alignment, but you can change in this present moment. You can change and be grander in action, and that's why mom's tired of hearing the same excuses over and over and over again of, you know, people saying sorry, or they're going to change, or this is going to shift, and it never does. That's mom's biggest, you know, don't waste your fucking time with those things. Don't waste mom's energy and tell her that you're going to do something, that you're going to change, you're going to be grander, and then don't do it. You know, mom has never said she's going to do something and not do it. That's... That's integrity. You have to do what you say you're going to do. Especially for God, why would you not want to? So, you know, that's a big one for everybody to look at as well. That, you know, you have to follow everything up by action. Like Mom had said yesterday, she's like, the forgiveness, you know, we move forward with it. But it has to be backed up by action. You can't just talk a bunch of shit and run your mouth. And that's why Mom is the way she is with most of the team. Because... They will <clears throat> say they're going to change and they don't. It's humanity. It's ego. And that's where you have to change by action and actually pushing through that energetic. Son, how many times have you been here and left? Very. 16, right? Okay, prepare yourself. 17's coming. Get your ass here now. Yeah. You better thank God right now in front of all humanity. Thank you, Mama. Wow, thank you, love. Get him, Larry. We love you. Don't 
be a whore. Mission house, get him here now. Mission house, get Larry to the hub ASAP. Okay. All right. Go get him, Larry. We'll see you soon. Love you. Love you. Thank you, guys. I knew. I was like, what is he waiting for? Get ready for 17. <laughs> oh, no, you better not get ready for 17. Um, yeah, and, you know, Larry's always had, you know, he's he's been able to hold it, and, and that's something where... The divine masculine energy before Father fully anchored it in. It was it was bopping around the masculine field for a couple of years now. We've all seen it, and the thing that I've always been I've always said to Larry, especially, is there were as many times that Larry was a shithead in, in Oregon, which was like ninety percent of the time. There was about ten percent of the time that I saw his divinity, and <laughs> very low percentage. It was a solid 10%. Um, there were moments, you know, the moment when she was getting attacked by humanity and he stepped up and stabilized her um, the night that we birthed the new earth. Um, and I know that there's been a couple other ones where Larry has really stepped up. The, he cleared the Atlantean timeline with mom, father, hadn't been on mission yet. And, you know, those are the, the remembrances of, like, I've seen those glimpses of the masculine come online for mom. Of course, they were never going to be able to hold it because father wasn't online yet fully. Um, but they all know better, just like we all do. We all know better. And there's been moments, it's the same thing with the masculine, with the feminine, where, you know, the divinity bops around and people hold it, but you've got to be solid and not go backwards. And you have to keep moving forward through that. And that's when mom sees that is backed up by action, where it's not making the same unconscious decisions. And is there leeway with like, <laughs> or is there, you know, different experiences with them where, of course, you know, they've all, we've all had our, our grandest moments on this mission, but there's no excuse why it's only moments. It should be all the time. It should be backed up by action and change. And <clears throat> mom has allowed way too many opportunities for everybody, um, but she understands and has compassion for everybody, and she has been through every human experience possible. She knows how dense the programming is. If there's anybody that knows the programming like it's her fucking job, because it is, it's mom. She knows the programming. She knows how to get out of it. She knows a lot of patience is required for them to get out of it. And that's why she's like, you guys are very fucking dumb. It, it, you guys are taking way longer than it needs to to get it. And, you know, that mom understands the programming more than anybody. She knows what it's required to break out of it, to get uncomfortable, to expand beyond it. But everybody is also in in charge of your own energetics, of doing the action, coming up with ideas, being creative, pushing mom's energy, stepping it up, you know, not doing it for a day or two. I like to call Larry spin outs. You know, he does a solid 72 hours in mom's field and then spins out. The last time he was here, he broke a record. He was here for a couple weeks. Um, but, you know, that was classic Larry, you know, coming into mom's field, hold it 72 hours, out the door. And, you know, mom had watched that over and over and over again where it was just that non-consistent over and over and over again in her field and mom needs everybody to be solid to be consistent to constantly be pushing her energy backing up mom's energetics of how she's always in integrity and right action and honoring that and being that example for others you know there was one moment where you know when i first got to mission and I, you know, Buddha and I were pretty much the only ones like doing any right action around the house. And every day, I, I didn't know what to do when I first got to mission. I was like, I don't know what's going on here. Um, I have no fucking clue what we're supposed to be doing, but I know that it's mom's house, so I'm gonna clean it every day. And so every day, uh, and I know Buddha did his as well, as we go around the house every day, cleaning everything top to bottom, like the whole usual like chore list. You know, we had a whole chore list for the whole team and pretty much every day I would do it and then Buddha would do some of it too, like that was it. And, and the rest of the 20 people in the house, it was a vacation, I don't know. And so one day, you know, mom was like, she had mentioned somebody, she's like, see, and this, and this girl, she cleans my house every day. And I was like, well, it's just common respect, you know, I'm not paying the rent, but I'll do my piece to make sure everything stays in check to, to show you that I'm grateful. And, you know, I got really stressed after a certain amount of time because I was like, people aren't growing, they're not helping, they're not evolving. And I brought it to mom finally. I was like, I don't know what to do. I'm trying to help people take care of the house and your space and, you know, help with the things that you need around the house. And I started crying and she was like, look, she's like, there's one way how you get them. 
she goes, you be the example. I was like, so you don't, you don't want me to call them out right now? She goes, no. She goes, you keep being the example. You keep being the example of love. And those that are real and in integrity will follow suit. And those, and pick up, you know, the, the energetics that you're putting out to be in service for me and help me out. And those that don't will fall away. And that's why we lost half the team in a span of a month and a half, two months max of being there because those stepped up that were, you know, saw the urgency for this and actually, you know, saw the example of what was going on and stepped up and the ones that didn't left. And that is mom's number one principle and that is remained solid to most of the team members to this day of always being the example because when you are the example and you know you are, everybody's watching you, look, like everybody's always watching mom. And you have to put out the utmost integrity and respect in every moment. And if you want to be a representative of mom, you have to be as grand as she is. And we're all capable of doing it if we just choose it. And you have to actively be the example and not go wishy-washy on everybody. In one moment do this, the next do that, back and forth over and over again. It's not going to work. You have to be strong. You have to be solid. You have to be able to continue to be the example otherwise you will not grow on this mission you have to evolve you have to have passion you have to want to help mom in any way that you can whatever she has set up for you you just surrender to it and know that it's the grandest for your experience your growth so that you can be a bigger example every time you're directly with mom and anytime she shares anything with you it is the most crucial information and like mom had said on the other phone call before we got here was I was, I was like, so what do we do? She's like, you know, if they're not going to listen to the call outs, you, you keep growing, you keep evolving because that levels up the playing field. She goes, why this energy is still allowed to come in the house is because you're not growing and the standard of the mission house is still low bar. And so if you are just above low bar, low bar bitches can come in and think that they run shit. But if you evolve to way up here, that bar has to move up with the energetics that are in the field. Mom may not be there directly. Her energy is always there, yes, but it's a unity consciousness. It's a group effort. It's just, you know, yeah, mom's energy is here, but everybody's is together. And we all have to be on the same frequency match as mom and father to be in this house. And just like Mission House, if you have a low standard for it, you're going to allow low standard in. But if you have a higher standard, hold yourself to a higher standard. Be a higher example of what you're, you know you're capable of and step into that. Then the standard gets raised. And that's what happens with consciousness, why beings will fall away out of your life after a certain amount of time. Because you've raised your consciousness, you've raised your standard. So low-grade ego bitches are no longer a match to you. And that, you know, it's also like we had to take responsibility for everything in that house because it was our fault. We allowed that standard to be low in the field. We allowed it. Me and Aurora, she knows exactly what I'm talking about. We allowed that energy into mom's field. We placated it. We enabled it. And that's the weakest shit. That is another betrayal is the enabling, is not calling it out because then you stop somebody from transforming and being grander by enabling because you allow them to keep going in ego dysfunction. And that is, again, another reason why it's a betrayal. Because at this point, myself, 150%, without a doubt, know that I know better. I know what's right action or not around mom's fields, whatever it may be, whether you're with her, you're not, team members, whatever. I know what's right action or not, and most of us do. It's, you know, it's very clear. You know what's right action and what's not right action. And, you know, to allow it, to enable it, to not say anything right away. You know, you've got to whip everybody into shape and everybody, you know, a lot of people don't have that energy, that drive. Like mom does, it's, it's a spark that's been taken away from humanity. You've got to get their gears grinding. That's why mom makes jokes about Buddha. His, <laughs> he's just like, i got to get that old train going. But that is humanity, though. You've got to... You have to push them and you have to push them quickly and, and not enable them because then as soon as you enable, and even if you drop the ball once and enable it, it causes that program to just come flooding right back in. And it causes energetic dysfunction in mom's fields. And those are the big things where 
physical action is, is so important on this mission. It is so crucial to move energy, but the energetics behind everything that you really have to master when you come to meet mom and you're on this mission is a whole nother level of understanding how mom works. It's energetics. It's nothing else than that. Everything else flows from mom's energetics. And when you understand mom's energetics and how she operates and how she is, then you start to be step into your mastery, but you'll never master it if you don't if you don't really, if you don't master mom, and I mean mastering understanding how she works, that if you don't take the time and to fully comprehend and understand how mom has become the master of all masters, how she operates the way that she does, what are her principles, what are the things that are, are important to her, what are the things that she puts as a top priority in terms of energetics, certain, you know, team qualities that need to be, you know, higher up than others. Like if you don't, if you don't feel into, you know, what is important for mom and, and how she operates with energetics, then you're never going to get anywhere. You have to understand how mom operates. You have to feel into mom's energetics. You have to feel into how mom does things because that is true reality. You can't think you know better. You can't think that you got to figure out or somebody else is right or you're right. You're not. Mom is the master of all energetics. And until you get it and until you see and experience how mom works energetically for certain reasons, reasons, you know, that's, you, you won't understand mom. I'll give you an example. I bet there's a lot of people out there probably wondering why Larry's coming back to mom's after his roast. It's energetics. And until you understand mom, you don't understand the multidimensional reason she does the things that she does. We don't know in this present moment, but we know how mom works energetics. So for the average person, Larry coming back after the last time everyone saw him here is a probably what the fuck moment. But you don't understand how mom works in energetics. And the biggest game is the surrender game. Allow it. Mom knows exactly what she's doing in every moment. And even if not in this physical present moment of now, Robin knows what the fuck he's doing. And that's why she was like, we're going live at 11 today. I'm trusting Robin. You know, mom's higher self up there knows exactly what she's doing in all moments. Mom has to be very present down here. And that's why Robin does what he does. We're very grateful for him and Jermaine. Um, you know, so Robin takes care of that piece. So mom will always be like, I don't know what Robin's doing. Why is Robin calling him back? She does know. And she is the master of all energetics. And everybody has to learn that to come into their mastery of how mom operates because there's no other way to get to new earth and true reality until you until you master that with mom and that's your own, you know, dynamic with your own energetics and learning about mom. And that's why watching her videos, watching the streams, hearing the team experiences of, of learning these different things. It's very crucial to this mission for everybody because that's really how you grow and evolve. Nice. Hello, you mama. Yeah, another big one. Another big one for me, and this is something, you know, Hope and I have struggled with. She not as much, but both of us have have failed on so many levels of putting into practice putting in mom's wisdom and the stuff that she trained us with and my biggest one was not wanting to confront people I just didn't want to I didn't want the backlash I didn't want to deal with you know the, the, the battling and I would let so many things go even though I knew that it was incorrect I knew that it was out of alignment I wouldn't say shit because I was like, I don't want to deal with it. And mom has told that to me many times of like confrontation, you got to get over it. You got to be willing to just fucking tell people what's up. And it's taken me a long moment to actually get there because even in the moments when I did, and it was always like, I was always very intense, very passionate. And people my whole life told me, calm down, chill out. You're too much. So over time, I shut down, I stopped. I became quiet, I didn't say anything, I held back, I just zipped it. And I had to get past a lot of that and start learning again how to actually confront shit the way mom does. And she'd put me in uncomfortable positions to force me to do it, you know? And in many moments, it was like when I did, the projections would come 
and they would come and then I would give up again and be like, I'm done with it. And there were so many times that Hope and I both shut down over and over when we knew shit was not right. But we just stopped saying stuff. We just stopped saying it, stopped calling people out because we were done with the bullshit and the projection. But that was in so many ways a failure to mom because she showed us how to be stronger than that, how to deal with confrontation, how to just call people out and fucking stand up for her. That's what she was looking for. Stand up for mom. Even if you're wrong, if you're, you know, what you're calling out, if your intention's pure, you're standing up for mom, then it's correct. And that's been one of the biggest lessons for me and I'm sure other people on this team is how to just stand the fuck up for mom because we know what's right. We know what's correct. I've been with mom long enough to know what is going to hurt her energetically and what's not. And one of the biggest things that has been my, my thing on this mission is taking. And I've heard mom's stories and of how much people have taken from her and that has been the biggest kind of heartbreak for me because I feel I'm probably one of the only people on this mission who can relate to the lifestyle that mom actually had before she went on mission and what she sacrificed and gave up to serve humanity and I know what she gave up and then she worked her ass off for every little thing and then someone would come and take it and so when I, ever, all the stories I heard of her would break my heart. And when I first got to mission, I always felt it was an interesting, energetic, that the day I chose to show up to mission was the day that all the takers got kicked out of the house. And I realized very quickly that like, no one was making sure that mom was being taken